Magic Doctor, CEO Lady's Humble Husband. Chapter 3701 to Chapter 3725. Have fun reading as well as listening. Chapter 3701. Because she noticed that Lord Huang was actually flirting with Yu Ching when giving gifts, with a playful look on his face. Although Yu Ching pretended not to notice and smiled to brush it off, Su Momo was still very angry. After all, no parents would like to see someone openly flirting with their daughter. Brother in law, I want to teach that guy a lesson. Su Momo gritted her teeth. Shin Fei said, Don't be impulsive. The ceremony isn't over yet. I'll handle it later. After the local dignitaries finished presenting their gifts, only Chin Fei and Su Momo, who were seated at the main seats, remained. Approaching, they each presented their prepared gifts. Chin Fei's gift was a palm sized iron plate, specially crafted by Duan Qian Jin, a defensive magical treasure with a grade of Tier 5 celestial. Even in the elemental realm, it was considered a top tier treasure. After all, Yu Qing was now the head of the Qin Yu Palace and she would surely encounter more in the future, so Chin Fei had this protective treasure made for her. However, no one at the scene recognized Chin Fei's treasure. To others, it was just a plain black iron plate and nothing special. Finally, Su Momo's gift was a delicacy she brought from Earth. When Yu Qing was stranded on Earth and adopted by Su Momo, she had tasted many earthly delicacies, some of which she particularly liked. So, this time, Su Momo specifically returned to Earth, found the chef from back then, and carefully prepared a dish to bring back. Yu Qing was very fond of this gift, her face full of smiles and continuous gratitude. However, the others present couldn't help but make a commotion and whisper among themselves. While most people couldn't recognize Chen Fei's gift, they could tell it was probably a cultivator's treasure, which was acceptable. But now, in such a grand occasion, Su Momo, sitting in the most prestigious seat, was giving food as a gift. In their eyes, this was too shabby. Some guests even couldn't help but furrow their brows. They thought that by seating themselves below these two seemingly shabby guests, the Qingyu Palace was showing disrespect towards them. Amidst various mixed emotions, the discussions naturally turned unpleasant. However, Su Momo didn't care at all. After all, the relationship between her and Yu Qing was not something outsiders could understand. With a smile, Yulan also spoke up, suppressing the discussions in the room, and officially announced the end of the succession ceremony. The room erupted into enthusiastic applause, signaling the end of the ceremony. But just then, a clear bird chirp sounded outside the main hall. Everyone turned to look only to see a phoenix engulfed in flames descending from the sky and landing at the entrance of the main hall. Upon the phoenix stood a man dressed in white. With a gentle leap, the man landed and entered the main hall, then looked towards the center where Yulan was seated, and softly apologized. Little Lon, I'm sorry. I'm late because I was picking out a gift. After saying this, the man took out an exquisite jade hairpin and walked towards Yulan. Lon, this jade hairpin is called Cloud Phoenix Gilded with Gold. It took me three years to carefully craft it with the help of experts from the elemental realm. This jade hairpin is inscribed with 100 formations, giving it various effects such as beautifying, protecting the skin, defense, and even sword attacks. Its quality has reached the level of second grade earth. At this moment, there was a sudden commotion in the audience. Almost all the guests were amazed. Who is that? He looks so handsome and so dignified. He arrived on a phoenix and his actions are so extravagant. He must have a distinguished identity. It seems he's a wealthy young man from the elemental realm. I never thought the palace Lord Yulan would know such a prominent figure. She's really lucky. I wonder why palace Lord Yulan is in such a hurry to step down. Perhaps she's already in love and preparing to marry. Could it be that besides the succession ceremony, we'll witness another happy event today? Amidst various discussions, Lord Huang and his companions in the VIP seats smiled proudly and greeted him. Joe, you've come. Then, Lord Huang looked around and, in a boastful tone, introduced, 
This is Zhou Zhijin, the son of the Grand Prefect of Yang Yuan City in the Elemental Realm. Zhou Zhijin's father is Zhou Liang, the Lord of Yang Yuan City. Therefore, Zhou Zhijin is the young Lord of Yang Yuan City. A few years ago, Palace Lord Yulan traveled to Yang Yuan City and unfortunately encountered a fierce beast. As a result, Zhou Zhijin happened to be nearby and saved Palace Lord Yulan, thus they met. With that said, the discussions among the guests became even more enthusiastic. He's really a big shot from the elemental realm. He's still the son of a city lord, truly a noble young master. Palace Lord Yulan is so lucky to meet such a rich second generation. She'll surely prosper in the future. It seems Palace Lord Yulan is going to the elemental realm, leaving our small place. When will I ever have such luck? Sumomo and Shinfei couldn't help but be surprised at this moment. They didn't know about Yulan's experience. The two looked at Yulan together and immediately realized that something seemed off. Because, at this moment, Yulan's expression was somewhat strange. Although she wore a smile on her face, there was a hint of surprise and embarrassment in her eyes, faintly accompanied by a touch of disgust. Brother-in-law, something seems off. Sumomo said. Chen Fei whispered, keep watching. At this moment, Zhou Zhijin, holding the jade hairpin, walked up to Yulan. With a gentle expression, he looked at Yulan and said, Lan, besides the succession ceremony today, I also want to propose to you. Will you marry me? After saying this, Zhou Zhijin smiled confidently and looked at Yulan. The scene erupted in an uproar. Say yes, say yes. She'll definitely say yes. He's a nobleman from the elemental realm. So lucky, so happy. As the atmosphere grew more lively, Yulan's expression became more embarrassed. She hadn't expected Zhou Zhijin to stage such a performance. A few months ago, hadn't she already rejected him? And he had promised not to bother her further. But she hadn't expected Zhou Zhijin to pull such a move at this critical moment. Taking a deep breath, Yulan suppressed her displeasure and spoke in as calm a tone as possible, Young Master Zhou, I'm very grateful for your presence at the succession ceremony of my Qingyu Palace. But I feel that perhaps a relationship between us may not be quite suitable. Thank you for your affection, but I'm sorry. The previously lively and joyous atmosphere quieted down abruptly with Yulan's words. Almost everyone wore expressions of astonishment. They didn't understand why Yulan would reject Zhou Zhijin's proposal. Even Zhou Zhijin, who had been confident just moments ago, now had a twitch in his cheek, his expression frozen on his face. Chapter 3702 After a brief stiffness, the gentleness and smile on Zhou Zhijin's face quickly dissipated, replaced by a cold and stern expression. He stared at Yulan and spoke again. Lan, perhaps my proposal was a bit sudden and startled you. But please believe me, Zhou Zhijin, that I am sincere. Please marry me. Zhou Zhijin proposed again, his tone seeming even more affectionate than before. At this moment, everyone's gaze fell on Yulan, waiting for her response. Yulan's expression changed for a moment as she looked at Zhou Zhijin. Finally, she took a deep breath and spoke up. I'm sorry. Just three simple words, without any further explanation, but her attitude was very clear. Yulan rejected Zhou Zhijin's proposal. The scene, which had quieted down due to astonishment, suddenly became lively again, and everyone excitedly discussed what had just happened. However, the more lively the atmosphere became, the more embarrassed Zhou Zhijin felt. Anger quickly accumulated in his heart. He had thought that, with his status and position, proposing to a woman from the lower realm would be a sure thing. But he hadn't expected that even after putting on such a heartfelt performance, she would still refuse. To him, this was a complete humiliation. For the proud young lord of Yangyuan City, such a situation was unacceptable. So, Zhou Zhijin's expression darkened as he looked at Yulan and said, Yulan, I'll ask you one last time. 
Before he could finish, Yulan shook her head firmly. Young Master Zhou, I don't have that intention. Ha ha. Upon hearing this, Zhou Zhijin suddenly burst into laughter, growing louder and louder until he drowned out all other sounds in the hall. When everyone's attention was fully focused on him, Zhou Zhijin's laughter abruptly stopped. His eyes narrowed, and he stared fiercely at Yulan. Then, a slight smirk appeared on his lips, his voice carrying a hint of arrogance and coldness. Yulan, I was originally planning to give you some face, but since you don't know what's good for you, don't blame me for being rude. Sensing something amiss, Yulan spoke in a low voice, Zhou Zhijin, what are you up to? Before Zhou Zhijin could respond, Lord Huang and his companions in the VIP seat stood up and approached Zhou Zhijin. Lord Huang smiled and said, Zhou, I've always said, with these lowly women from the lower realm, it's best to be straightforward. No need to beat around the bush. That's right, a lowly woman from the lower realm. Does she really think she's something? Ha ha. Miss Qin sneered repeatedly. Master Gu also spoke up, saying, Yulan, you know Zhou Sha's strength. I advise you to come over yourself and not provoke him. Otherwise, your clear serenity palace might just... This was a blatant threat, and Yulan's expression immediately darkened. She gritted her teeth. Zhou Zhijin, you've gone too far. And between us, there's absolutely no romantic feeling, you. Ha ha. Laughter interrupted Yulan's words. Zhou Zhijin spoke up. Feelings? Ha ha. Do you really think I've fallen for you? Don't flatter yourself. If it weren't for your clear serene enchantment technique, martial art, which benefits me, do you think I would bother with you, a lowly woman from the lower realm? At these words, Yulan's face turned pale. Initially, she and Shen Fei had a misunderstanding because of this clear serene enchantment technique, martial art from their sect. This technique required practitioners to maintain their virginity, be free from desires, and cultivate layer by layer to perfection. Eventually, they would choose a beloved partner, unite their spirits and bodies to perfection, and both parties would advance in cultivation. Over the years, Yulan had cultivated this technique to the ninth level, reaching a bottleneck where further progress was difficult. Her cultivation had also stalled at the ninth level of the elemental soul realm. During these years, she had traveled around, making friends for the sake of her sect and herself. However, along the way, she hadn't found the person she admired, so her cultivation remained stuck. But she never expected that Zhou Zhijin, whom she regarded as a friend, had targeted her because of her martial art. Instantly, she felt cheated, angry, and saddened. She stared at Zhou Zhijin, biting her lip, and said, even if I die, I won't let you succeed. Zhou Zhijin, hearing this, sneered and waved his hand. An invisible force bound Yulan and brought her directly to his side. Without my permission, you won't be able to die. The people of Clear Serenity Palace were shocked and rushed forward. Palace Master. Let go of the Palace Master. Stop. However... Lord Huang and others casually pushed them back. A bunch of ants, still struggling. Ha ha. Zhou Zhijin chuckled, looking at Yulan beside him. Today is a joyous day, so I'll just enjoy it. Master Gu laughed. Zhou Sha, after you're done enjoying, don't forget about us, brothers. Zhou Zhijin laughed. Once I'm done playing, it'll be your turn. Lord Huang's gaze fell on Yu Jing. He hurriedly said, Zhou Sha, this little girl is not bad. I. Since Brother Huang is interested, then go ahead and play. With a wave of Zhou Zhijin's hand, Lord Huang eagerly walked towards Yu Jing. Yu Jing, pale with fear, wanted to resist but couldn't move at all. The others from Clear Serenity Palace and the guests present were motionless, completely powerless to resist. At this moment, Su Momo couldn't bear it any longer. She rushed forward and slapped Lord Huang across the face. Thinking of touching Xiao Jing, are you looking for death? Lord Huang was startled, turned his head to look, 
and found that the one who hit him was that weak earthling. He was suddenly furious. You just hit me, you. However, just as Lord Huang was about to strike, Chen Fei appeared in front of him, grabbed his arm, and twisted it forcefully. There was a crisp sound as his arm broke. Ah! Lord Huang screamed in pain, then erupted with elemental energy, roaring angrily, How dare you hit me? I'll kill you, kill. Zhou Zhijin also noticed the situation and was surprised. He hadn't expected that a despised earthling would actually injure Lord Huang. Although this Lord Huang was just one of his followers and not worth mentioning in terms of strength, he was still not someone an earthling could touch. So, Zhou Zhijin looked at Chen Fei, his voice cold as he ordered, I'll give you three seconds to let go. Otherwise... Bang. Chen Fei's large hand reached out, and with a slap, he directly smashed Lord Huang's head. The bursting sound interrupted Zhou Zhijin's words, instantly making his expression turn cold. You. Chapter 3703 The entire hall fell silent, and all eyes focused on Chen Fei and Zhou Zhijin. Many guests wore expressions of astonishment, with flashes of surprise in their eyes. After all, they never expected that the two seemingly insignificant earthlings sitting in the front row would dare to lay hands on dignitaries from the elemental realm. What's even more surprising is that not only did they act, but they also succeeded. What's the background of those two people? Are they really earthlings? I heard they're close friends of Miss Yu Jing, the palace master. Could it be some kind of hidden identity for a major mission? Otherwise, how could they be so powerful? I think it's possible, otherwise, Clear Serenity Palace wouldn't have arranged them in the front row. But that Zhou young master is not someone to mess with. His father is the lord of a city. I wonder who's more powerful. At this mo moment, with Lord Huang killed, Miss Qin, Master Gu, and the others not only were startled but instinctively took a few steps back, distancing themselves from Qin Fei. Zhou Zhijin, with a dark expression on his face, stared fiercely at Qin Fei and said coldly, Do you know what you're doing? Qin Fei replied calmly, I'm killing. So what? Zhou Zhijin hadn't expected the other party to be so audacious. His voice grew even colder, killing. You're so audacious. As he spoke, Zhou Zhijin's aura surged, his face full of anger as he struck towards Qin Fei with his palm. This strike was filled with anger, with surging qi and formidable momentum. Many guests felt the terrifying aura and hurriedly backed away, afraid of being affected. Die. A roar sounded as Zhou Zhijin's attack reached Qin Fei. At the same time, Miss Qin and Master Gu on both sides also made a move, but their target wasn't Qin Fei, it was Su Momo behind him. Facing such attacks, Qin Fei stood still, showing no change in expression. Clap. Qin Fei raised his right hand and blocked Zhou Zhijin's strike. Crack. With a sound of fracture, Zhou Zhijin's right arm was bent backward by a tremendous force, directly breaking. Zhou Zhijin let out a painful scream, the muscles on his face trembling continuously. Miss Qin and Master Gu, who had originally been confident, were startled by the scream and were a step slower in their movements. In just a moment, Chen Fei swiftly chopped off the arms of the two, and blood gushed out. Suddenly, two more screams resounded in the hall. The three of them looked at Chen Fei with astonishment and disbelief. Don't, don't come any closer. You dare to harm us. Do you know who we are? My father is the lord of Yang Yuan City, the GG Ran Prefect. If you injure me, my father will tear you into pieces and exterminate your entire family. At this moment, the young master of Yang Yuan City continued to threaten. Seeing this, Chen Fei shook his head, not bothering with idle talk, and directly slapped out his palm. Smack. With a crisp sound, Zhou Zhijin's head exploded like a watermelon, instantly killing him. Miss Qin and Master Gu were horrified and scrambled to escape. But Chen Fei wouldn't let them go. 
Two streams of chi shot out, piercing through their hearts and killing them. Thus, these several young lords and ladies from the elemental realm all perished. After dealing with them, Chen Fei turned his head and looked at Yu Jing and Yu Lan, smiling gently. It's over. Su Momo ran to Yu Jing's side and hugged her, comforting her. Don't be afraid, Jing. Your godmother and your god uncle are here. Don't be afraid. Yu Lan showed a grateful expression, then looked at the guests and said loudly, Everyone, these people from the elemental realm had ill intentions. We were forced to retaliate and could only kill them. This matter was done by our clear serenity palace. We will bear all responsibility, so please rest assured. The succession ceremony ends here today, and I won't keep you any longer. With these words, the guests all bid farewell and quickly left. After all, they understood that with so many people from the elemental realm dead, and one of them being a noble young master, this matter probably wouldn't end here. Although Yulan had just said that Clear Serenity Palace would bear all responsibility, no one dared to guarantee that the anger of the Lord of the Elemental Realm wouldn't affect them. Therefore, it was best to leave now, dissociate from this matter, and avoid any complications. Almost all the guests used their most powerful means to leave quickly. Among these guests, there suddenly sounded a crisp bird call, and a phoenix flew into the sky and flew away. Seeing this, Elder Liang couldn't help but change his expression and worry. That's Zhou Zhijin's phoenix. Should we intercept it? Otherwise, if the phoenix goes back to report, we... Yulan shook her head gently. No need. This matter can't be kept hidden. There's no need to trouble an innocent spirit beast. Elder Liang looked worried. But, Palace Master, what should we do next? Yulan couldn't answer for a while so she could only glance at Chin Fei and Su Momo, then replied, let everyone calm down and not panic. We will handle it. Elder Liang nodded and took his leave. Yulan added, now, I'm no longer the palace master. Jing is. Please pay attention to the title. Elder Liang left with his people. Yulan and Yu Jing then invited Chin Fei and Su Momo to the back lounge. Yu Jing's face was filled with worry as she couldn't help but speak. Pal, no, master, what if they come for revenge? What should we do? Yulan couldn't answer, so she could only look at Chen Fei and Su Momo. Before Chen Fei could speak, Su Momo, with a carefree look, said without worry, Jing, Lan, don't worry. Nothing serious will happen. When the time comes, let my brother-in-law handle it. Their identity seemed to be. Yu Jing remained worried. Su Momo continued, Who cares about their identities? It's the same to my brother in law. Right, brother in law? With that said, Momo looked at Chin Fei. Chin Fei smiled and reassured, Indeed, it's nothing serious. You don't need to worry. Pausing for a moment, Chin Fei added, Today, I'll stay here overnight. If they come for revenge, I'll deal with it. Hearing this, Yulan breathed a sigh of relief and immediately said, let me arrange a guest room for Mr. Chin. Su Momo then pulled Yu Jing, Jing, I heard that Clear Serenity Palace has some treasures that are very effective for beauty and skin care. Why don't you let me try? Godmother, those are the treasures of the sect and can't be used lightly. Yu Jing explained. Su Momo waved her hand. Jing, now you're the palace master. The sect's things are your things. The two of them left, murmuring to each other. Chapter 3704 As night fell, after the hustle and bustle of the day, the mountains and the quiet of the night appeared tranquil. Moonlight poured in through the windows, leaving a pool of clarity on the floor of the guest room. Chen Fei sat at the edge of the bed, quietly practicing cultivation. At that moment, there were a few brief knocks on the door from outside. Who is it? Chen Fei asked. It's me, young Master Chen. A female voice sounded. Even though the voice was intentionally lowered, Chen Fei still recognized it as Yulan's voice. Young Master Chen, may I come in? Yulan asked proactively. As she spoke, there was a light sound, and the door was pushed open, 
with Yulon stepping in. Chen Fei's gaze shifted as he saw Yulon entering the room. Because, at this moment, Yulon was draped in a set of sheer gauze, almost translucent, outlining her graceful figure beneath the gauze. Under the moonlight, it appeared hazy and romantic, adding a hint of mystique. This made Chen Fei feel a slight dryness in his throat, his voice caught in his throat until Yulon approached him, prompting him to speak. Madam Yulon, it's late, do you, um, have something? Approaching Chen Fei, Yulon expressed her gratitude. Young Master Chen, I appreciate your assistance today at the hall. Otherwise, our clear serenity palace might have been in trouble. With that, Yulan bowed deeply to Chen Fei. Underneath the sheer veil, a motion stirred, and Chen Fei felt as though the moonlight wasn't as pure anymore. Madam Yulan, it was just a small matter, no need to be so polite. Chen Fei felt his throat getting increasingly dry, unable to help but swallow. At this moment, Yulan rose and sat beside Chen Fei, softly saying, Young Master Chen, during the day in the hall, you should have heard what Zhou Zhijin said. What matter? Chen Fei hadn't fully snapped out of his days. Yulan whispered, the matter regarding the cultivation technique of our clear serenity palace. Young Master Chen, didn't I explain it to you last time you visited? Now, I have cultivated the technique to the highest ninth level but am stuck at this step. If I want to progress further, I must find the right person and then. At this point, Yulan's words halted, but her body leaned gently toward Chen Fei. Suddenly, Chen Fei felt a fragrant scent, a softness enveloping him as Yulan fell into his embrace. Madam Yulan, this. Chen Fei felt his throat growing dry and hoarse. However, Yulan continued her actions, shedding the sheer veil, her delicate figure entwining with his. Young Master Chen, please help me with my cultivation. As she spoke, Yulan exerted force, pushing Chen Fei onto the bed, and then pressed closer. Under the flickering moonlight, amidst the chirping of birds. As the night passed, the next morning, sunlight pierced through the thin mist of dawn, streaming into the room. Chen Fei still lay on the soft bed, feeling somewhat dreamy about the events of last night, as if they weren't real. Meanwhile, Madame Yulan had already dressed, bowing to Chin Fei with a calm tone. Thank you, young Master Chin, for assisting me in my cultivation last night. Please rest assured, young Master Chin, I won't disclose what happened last night to anyone else, nor will it affect your family and friends. With that, Yulan prepared to leave. Although she tried to appear as normal as possible, Chin Fei could see through her. The flush on her cheeks, the trembling of her thighs, all betrayed her in her turmoil. A little reflection was natural, after all, despite Madame Yulan's esteemed position as the foremost figure in the Grand Xia realm, and her formidable cultivation, she rarely interacted with men, let alone had any intimate encounters. Even though she had mentally prepared herself beforehand, first-hand experience was different. Therefore, she couldn't conceal her emotional and physical unease at this moment. Seeing this, Chen Fei reached out his right hand and grabbed Yulan's arm. Young Master Chen, what are you? Chen Fei exerted a slight force and directly pulled Yulan back onto the large bed. Ah, young Master Chen, what are you? Yulan was somewhat panicked, her cheeks reddening even more. Chen Fei looked at the delicate Yulan and chuckled softly, Madam Yulan, you achieved a successful cultivation last night but I'm not done yet. So, I want to continue practicing. After saying that, Chen Fei hugged Yulan and resumed cultivation once again. After another round of commotion, it was nearly noon by the time the two emerged from the guest room. Although they tried to avoid others along the way. But just as they reached the main hall, Sumomo approached mysteriously, grabbing Chen Fei's arm and winking, brother-in-law, how was Madame Yulan last night? Cough, what are you saying? I don't understand. Chin Fei pretended to be clueless. Su Momo said, Brother-in-law, don't pretend. Madame Yulan sneaked into your room last night and didn't come out until noon today. Nothing happened between you two. 
Don't worry, I won't tell my sister. I'll keep it a secret for you. Shin Fei coughed again, hastily explaining, we were practicing cultivation. Madame Yulon encountered some difficulties in her cultivation, and I was just assisting her. Cultivation. Su Momo looked disbelieving. Brother-in-law, it's that kind of cultivation where two people practice together, right? I'm not ignorant of the clear serenity palace's techniques. It seems like Zhou Zhijin didn't get what he wanted yesterday. It's a bargain for you, brother-in-law. Chen Fei couldn't argue, so he quickly walked away, changing the subject. Someone might come over today. I need to prepare. Brother-in-law, don't leave. Tell me in detail, what exactly did it feel like? After practicing that technique, is there anything special? Are you much stronger than ordinary people? An hour later, a burst of energy suddenly erupted from the back mountain of Clear Serenity Palace, spreading throughout the entire Clear Serenity Mountain. Everyone was startled, but soon some elders came out to reassure everyone. They explained that there was no need to panic, as the surge of energy was not a bad thing. It was Madame Yulon, the former palace lord, who had officially broken through the ninth level of the Elemental Soul Realm and reached the Elemental Embryo Realm. With this, the first native Elemental Embryo Realm cultivator appeared in the Grand Sia Realm. Immediately, the entire Clear Serenity Palace was filled with excitement. The news spread rapidly within the Grand Sia Realm. Many guests who had just left the day before were surprised and curious upon hearing this news. In short, with Yulon's breakthrough, her position as the foremost figure in the Grand Sia Realm became more solid. The position of Clear Serenity Palace as the first sect also became more secure. Almost everyone was rejoicing. Only Chen Fei, at this moment, looked at Su Momo entangling him with a face full of distress. He had just barely gotten rid of Su Momo before, but now, with the news of Yulan's breakthrough, Su Momo came back to pester him. Brother-in-law, Madame Yulan broke through. You said nothing happened last night, but now you have to admit it, right? Oh right, brother-in-law, didn't you say that the technique benefits both parties? Madame Yulan broke through. What about you? Did your cultivation increase? Chapter 3705 After Su Momo's reminder, Chin Fei subconsciously sensed his own cultivation. Then, to his surprise, he found that his cultivation had actually improved quite a bit in just this short night. Although he was still at the ninth level of the elemental embryo realm and had not entered the control realm, he could genuinely feel the progress in his cultivation. This unique technique of clear serenity palace is indeed extraordinary. Chin Fei couldn't help but murmur with emotion. Brother-in-law, what did you just say? You admit it, right? You did something with Madame Yulon after all. Sumomo came over, looking triumphant. Brother-in-law, I'm someone who speaks without reservation. Sometimes I can't control my mouth. If my sister finds out. Chin Fei grabbed a piece of food and stuffed it into Su Momo's mouth. If you can't control your mouth, then shut it. Brother-in-law, you're so rude. You hurt me. Who told you to blabber? Hmph. Isn't it because you can't control yourself? The two of them were teasing each other, while at this moment, everyone in the palace rushed towards the main hall. Seeing this, Chen Fei rubbed Su Momo's head and said, All right, stop fooling around. Let's go over there too. In the main hall, Yulan had already appeared on the platform. She glanced at Chen Fei, a hint of shyness flashing in her eyes, then smiled and announced to everyone, I have officially entered the elemental embryo realm. The scene was filled with applause and cheers, and everyone congratulated her. But just as they were celebrating, someone suddenly rushed into the main hall and exclaimed urgently, Palace Lord, someone is coming. Before he could finish, a roar erupted like thunder, suppressing all other sounds. Yulon of Clear Serenity Palace, come out and face death. Instantly, everyone in the hall's expression changed drastically. This aura, could it be someone from the elemental realm? Could it be the elder of that young city lord? This. 
That person is the lord of a city in the elemental realm. What should we do? Just a moment ago, everyone was celebrating, but now they were in a panic. Yulon's face sank, and she said, Don't panic, I will handle this. After speaking, Yulon took a deep breath and walked out of the hall. Yujing, Elder Liang, and others immediately followed. Chen Fei's expression also became slightly serious, and he said to Su Momo, Let's go see what's happening. In the spacious square outside the main hall, a middle-aged man with a stern face stood in mid-air, wearing a square crown. Beside the man stood a man and a woman, both with proud expressions, towering over everyone. Yulan stepped forward voluntarily, looked at the people in the air, and said, I am Yulan of Clear Serenity Palace. May I ask who you are and why you are here in our Clear Serenity Palace? You are Yulan? The man with the square crowns gaze darkened as he looked at Yulan, his voice cold. I am Zhou Liang. My son, Zhou Zhijin, died because of you. Although Yulan had guessed it earlier, confirming the identity now still made her face change slightly. But she continued, Zhou City Lord, Zhou Zhijin's death has nothing to do with my clear serenity palace. He was a person. Before Yulan could finish speaking, the woman beside Zhou Liang interrupted her with a stern voice. How do you quibble? The young city lord came to the mortal realm this time specifically for you. Do you still want to deny responsibility? Another man snorted coldly and spoke up. Don't waste time arguing with him. Yulan, hand over the murderer. Then, you can accompany the young city lord in death, and perhaps our city lord will consider sparing your clear serenity palace. Such domineering and ruthless words instantly made everyone in Clear Serenity Palace furious and nervous. Yujing stepped forward at this moment, fearlessly looking up at the people in the air and speaking. Lord Zhou, the death of young Master Zhou was his own doing, it had nothing to do with my master. Moreover, young Master Zhou was disrespectful towards my master, and even attempted to seize someone by force. He was in the wrong. What are you? Daring to speak about young Master Zhou, the woman screeched sharply. Who are you? The man also demanded sternly. The two auras directly locked onto Yujing, making her feel immense pressure, causing her delicate body to tremble involuntarily. But Yujing persisted stubbornly, I am Yujing, Yulan's disciple, and also the current palace lord of Clear Serenity Palace. If you have any grievances against Clear Serenity Palace, then you can address them with me. You presumptuous fool. You court death. The woman was displeased, releasing a burst of energy that shot towards Yujing. This attack was fast and fierce, and even though Yujing's strength was considerable, she found it difficult to evade. As the tragedy was about to unfold, Yulan intervened. With a loud bang, she shattered the woman's energy, blocking the attack. Master, I. Yujing's heart was still pounding with fear. Yulan gave her a gentle smile and said, Xiao Jing, your master is still here. I will handle this matter. With that, Yulan stepped forward, facing the three individuals. We have clarified the situation. Whatever you decide, I, Yulan, will bear the responsibility. The woman's attack was blocked, and she was already somewhat annoyed. Now that she saw Yulan daring to step forward, her anger surged even more and she sneered coldly. So, you've reached the elemental embryo realm. It seems that your strength has made you arrogant. However, with your current strength, you are still nothing in our eyes, just an ant. Watch as I crush you. As she spoke, the woman attacked Yulan. Yulan immediately defended herself and engaged in combat with the woman. The two energies collided and clashed in the air momentarily evenly matched. However, the woman soon exerted more force, suppressing Yulan's energy. Although Yulan gritted her teeth and resisted, she couldn't withstand the opponent's assault and was gradually pushed back. This scene shocked everyone. Yulan had already entered the elemental embryo realm, becoming the first person in the Great Xia realm. Yet, she couldn't defeat a mere subordinate of the woman, and there was no suspense in this battle. 
Many people showed pessimism in their expressions. Seeing that Yulan was about to be overwhelmed, Chen Fei stepped forward, stood in front of Yulan, and blocked the woman's oppressive energy for her. Yulan breathed a sigh of relief, took a few deep breaths heavily, then looked at Chen Fei apologetically and whispered, I'm sorry, I wanted to rely on myself. Chen Fei's gaze was gentle, and he whispered softly, There's no need to apologize, you've already done well enough. They're the ones at fault, and they will pay the price. With that, Chen Fei turned around and faced the woman who had attacked. Seeing that her intended target had been disrupted once again, the woman's expression became even more furious. Seeing that Chen Fei dared to confront her head on, she gritted her teeth fiercely, and her energy formed a ferocious wildcat in midair, pouncing towards Chen Fei. That wildcat was her elemental seal, and it was also her lethal move, with considerable power. In fact, there had been cultivators at the Elemental Embryo Realm second stage who died under this move. So, she smiled with confidence. However, what happened next made her smile freeze on her face. Because, with a casual wave of his hand, Chen Fei directly shattered her assured strike. Yu Pu. The surging shockwave even caused the woman to spit out blood, and she flew backwards. In the end, it was Zhou Liang who intervened and caught the woman. Chapter 3706 Master, I... The woman looked apologetically at Zhou Liang. The man beside her also had a change in expression at this moment. His gaze fixed on Chen Fei, then he snorted heavily, raising both hands above his head, gathering a mass of energy. The energy grew larger and larger, eventually forming a huge sphere. Then, with a roar, the man exerted force with both arms, fiercely smashing the entire sphere towards Chen Fei. The power of this move surpassed that of the woman just now. The residual waves of energy caused Clear Serenity Palace to tremble, as if containing the power to destroy heaven and earth. However, Chen Fei remained calm in the face of such an attack. With a gentle wave of his hand, a stream of energy shot out to meet the man's sphere of energy. Then, something surprising happened. The surging sphere of energy directly burst open, causing a backlash against the man, who also spat out blood as he flew backward. How is this possible? Who are you after all? The man's face was filled with disbelief, unable to believe that someone in the great Xia realm could withstand his full force. Zhou Liang intervened again, rescuing the man. You too, step back. After letting the two men retreat, Zhou Liang narrowed his eyes and stared at Chen Fei, young man, it seems that your strength is greater than we expected. If I'm not mistaken, your strength should have reached the fourth stage of the elemental embryo realm. For a cultivator from a small world to achieve such a level is quite rare. Your strength, even if placed in the elemental realm, is still quite remarkable. Now, I'll give you a chance. Serve under me for a thousand years, and I will overlook the matter of you killing my son. With these words, whether it was the man and woman, or the people of Clear Serenity Palace below, all were stunned. They never expected that Zhou Liang would not attack Chen Fei, but instead try to recruit him. Even Chen Fei himself was slightly surprised. However, he sneered, looked at Zhou Liang, and said, You're not qualified to recruit me. You. Now Zhou Liang was truly angry. He thought he had shown great magnanimity by letting go of his hatred and extending an olive branch, but he didn't expect the other party to not give him any face, which made him feel somewhat embarrassed. Young man, sometimes missing an opportunity cannot be compensated for in the rest of one's life. You better think carefully about what you're doing, Zhou Liang said in a deep voice. Before Chen Fei could say anything, Su Momo beside him became a little impatient. She said to Chen Fei, Darling, why waste time with that guy? Just solve it quickly. I'm hungry and waiting to eat. With a swish, everyone's gaze turned to Su Momo, full of astonishment. 
They couldn't understand what confidence Su Momo had to dare say such things in front of Zhou Liang. After all, her martial arts strength was even weaker than many disciples of Clear Serenity Palace present, making her the weakest group of all. But even so, she seemed unusually relaxed, as if she didn't take Zhou Liang's threat seriously at all. Zhou Liang's expression became even uglier, darker than before. After all, Chen Fei had been arrogant just now, which could still be justified. But that woman, being so weak, dared to be arrogant, which was simply a blatant slap in Zhou Liang's face. This made him unable to endure it any longer. He burst out angrily, preparing to teach her a lesson. You ignorant fool, watch me. But just as Zhou Liang was about to make a move, Chen Fei nodded at Su Momo, then looked at Zhou Liang. Don't waste any more time, let's settle this quickly. As he spoke, Chen Fei suddenly reached out his right hand towards Zhou Liang in the air. You. Zhou Liang felt ridiculous and angry, ready to make a move. But suddenly, his face changed drastically. He wanted to retreat and dodge. However, Chen Fei's right hand seemed to lock onto him, and no matter how he tried to evade, he couldn't escape. What is this? Zhou Liang was shocked, ignoring everything else. He urged his energy and desperately struck towards Chen Fei's right hand. However, his attacks, when they landed on Chen Fei's right hand, were all blocked by an invisible membrane, not causing any harm at all. Crack. With a light sound, Chen Fei grabbed Zhou Liang, then slammed him fiercely onto the ground in front of the hall. You. Zhou Liang wanted to say something more. Chen Fei didn't bother wasting words with him. He formed his fingers into a sword shape and pierced towards Zhou Liang's Dantian. Puff. Zhou Liang's Dantian ruptured, and he let out a scream, collapsing to the ground. Only at this moment did he suddenly realize what was happening. He looked at Chen Fei with a sudden change in his eyes, his voice trembling. You, you are Chen Fei. The disciple of the prefect of Tianming. As soon as this title came out, the faces of the man and woman behind Zhou Liang changed drastically, full of astonishment. They were people from Daiming Prefecture and naturally had heard of the name Chen Fei. It was rumored that this Chen Fei was the disciple of the prefect of Tianming, and his relationship with the deputy prefect Xiaoming Lei was very close. Many people regarded him as the absolute candidate for the next prefect of Daiming Prefecture. Therefore, some people called Shen Fei the Young Prefect. However, in the decades since Daiming Prefecture was established, this young prefect rarely appeared, and he didn't have much contact with others. Therefore, there were not many people who could recognize Shen Fei's identity at a glance. Zhou Liang, the lord of Yang Yuan City and Daiming Prefecture, only recognized Shen Fei at the last moment, but it was already too late. The man and woman in the air were full of shock and hurriedly landed, kneeling in front of Chin Fei to beg for forgiveness. We were blind and offended the young prefect. Please punish us, young prefect. Chin Fei glanced at the two of them, waved his hand twice, and shattered their dantians as well. Then, he looked coldly at Zhou Liang and said, Zhou Liang, the cause of this incident was your son Zhou Zijin's greed and robbery, so I killed him. As a father and a city lord, your guidance was misguided, your subordinates were unruly, and you even wanted to bully the weak. Therefore, I abolished your Dantian as punishment. If you have any grievances, you can file a complaint in the capital of Daming Prefecture, and they will handle it according to the procedure. Enduring the pain, Zhou Liang knocked his head and trembled. I am convinced. Chen Fei waved his hand. In that case, you may leave. Of course, if you want to retaliate against Clear Serenity Palace, then you should consider the consequences beforehand. We dare not. Zhou Liang hurriedly spoke up, and then the three of them left trembling. As the three of them left, the people of Clear Serenity Palace finally came to their senses, many of them extremely surprised. They had been lamenting yesterday that this first guest in the VIP seat was too ordinary and not worthy. 
but they didn't expect that this was the true master who had hidden his strength. So, the whole group bowed respectfully. Thank you, young prefect, for saving our lives. Chapter 3707 Chen Fei repelling Zhou Liang and saving Clear Serenity Palace quickly spread throughout the entire Great Xia Realm. Many who had secretly prepared to watch a joke were dumbfounded. They hadn't expected Clear Serenity Palace not only to remain unscathed, but to also consolidate its position as the foremost sect in the Great Xia Realm. Furthermore, the news even reached the ears of some guests from other small worlds. This made them couldn't help but marvel, elevating Clear Serenity Palace's status in their minds. In short, after this incident, at least in the recent hundred years, no one dared to provoke Clear Serenity Palace. Inside Clear Serenity Palace, Yulan and Yujing held another banquet, specifically to thank Chen Fei. Of course, after the banquet, Yulan and Yujing continued their cultivation diligently. The next morning, Chen Fei and Su Momo bid farewell and left, preparing to return to Daiming Prefecture. Yulan and Yujing personally came to see them off, watching as the two entered the spatial passage before reluctantly leaving. On the way back to Clear Serenity Palace, Yujing occasionally glanced at Yulan, seemingly pondering something. Xiao Jing, what are you looking at? Is there something dirty on my face? Yulan couldn't help but speak up. Yujing hurriedly shook her head. No, master. There's nothing. Then what are you looking at? Yulan asked curiously. Yujing whispered, Master, I remember our cultivation method records that finding the right person to merge body and soul seems to only require once. It seems that the effect doesn't get better with more attempts. But, Master, you and young Master Chen, could it be that my cultivation method is not sufficient? After hearing the question, Yulan's cheek suddenly turned red, and she coughed lightly, hastily saying, Xiao Jing, there's nothing wrong with the cultivation method. You focus on your cultivation and don't worry. However, you've just become the palace master. There are still many things to do, and you need to adapt quickly. Learn more from the elders in the palace. If you don't understand anything, you can ask for help. After rambling for a while, Yulan finally managed to change the topic. Then she sighed softly and muttered to herself, Xiao Jing is too young, and she has grown up in the palace since she was a child, completely inexperienced in matters between men and women. If she wants to break through to the next level after perfecting her cultivation method, I'm afraid it will be difficult for her to find the right person. Yujing didn't know about her master's worries and instead carefully remembered her master's teachings. On Chen Fei's side, there were no surprises, and he and Su Momo returned to Daiming Prefecture safely. Originally, the two of them were planning to return to the Chin family by the lake, but a guard came over, young Master Chin. Master Xia has ordered us that if you return, please go see him immediately. Master wants to see me. Chin Fei's heart moved, so he could only let Su Momo go back alone and hurry to the Lord's mansion. Su Momo waved goodbye and bid farewell to Chin Fei. Before leaving, she even winked at Chin Fei and whispered softly, Brother-in-law, I will keep the things in Clear Serenity Palace secret for you these two days. You don't have to worry. Just focus on your work. Cough, cough. Chin Fei coughed and waved goodbye. Arriving at the Lord's Mansion, Chin Fei met Master Siami Lei and got straight to the point, Master, did you want to see me? Is something wrong? Master Xiaoming Lei looked at Chen Fei's nervous expression and smiled. Don't be so nervous, it's not something bad. Then, he took out a piece of paper and handed it to Chen Fei. Before, when you came back from Earth, didn't you mention helping to find the whereabouts of two people? Now, there's a clue. As soon as Chen Fei heard this, he remembered. Last time when I returned to Earth, I met many friends. But unfortunately, Master Xin Yuan Jia Shan and Lord Qingmu, I have never seen them. At that time, these two had already left Earth and traveled around. No one could contact them, so there was no way to inform them of Chen Fei's return to Earth. Later, after things settled down, 
Chen Fei returned to Daiming Prefecture with his family and friends, still thinking about the two of them. So he mentioned it to Master Xiamin Lei and Lord Tianming, asking them to help use the power of Daiming Prefecture to find the people. However, 30 years have passed in a flash, and there has been no news. Chen Fei himself almost forgot about this matter. Unexpectedly, now there is suddenly news about the two. Chen Fei quickly read the paper. Master, the message says. The people I'm looking for are in Daxing Prefecture, and the news was just received three days ago. Xiaoming Lei nodded. It was our person embedded in the caravan doing business over in Daxing Prefecture who accidentally saw them, so the news was relayed back. Daxing Prefecture is quite far from our Daming Prefecture, with the Great Marshal Prefecture in between. So, it has been difficult for the power of our Daming Prefecture to penetrate there. It's only now that we have received news. Having news is a good thing, Jin Fei said, taking the paper and arching his hand to Xiao Ming Lei, Master, I want to go to Daxing Prefecture. Before he could finish, Xiao Ming Lei waved his hand. All right. There's no need for all these formalities with me. Just go by yourself. Our people over in Daxing Prefecture have been informed. After you arrive, you can contact them to get more accurate information. Of course, our power in Daxing Prefecture is weak. The information we obtain may not be accurate, and it may even be a trap. If you encounter any trouble, leave immediately. Protecting yourself is the most important thing, understand? Shin Fei nodded. Master, I understand. All right, I won't say any more. You can go now, Xiao Ming Lei said, waving his hand. Shin Fei took his leave and returned to the Chin family. He told his wife and the others about the matter, quickly packed up, and then left with Chin Hua. The reason for taking Chin Hua along was that Shin Fei considered that they were in unfamiliar territory after all. Having more people would allow them to take care of each other and handle things that one person couldn't easily do. Xin Hu was quite excited. After all, these decades had been a bit boring for him. In terms of cultivation, he had already reached the seventh stage of the elemental embryo realm, and the speed of his continued cultivation had inevitably slowed down. In life, because of the trip to the Great Yin Prefecture, Xin Hu was deceived and emotionally hurt. This made him inexplicably pessimistic about relationships. Over the years, there were many women around him, but none of them became serious. So, this opportunity to go out with Chin Fei into an unfamiliar and previously unvisited Daxing Prefecture made him excited. Boss, do you think it's fun in Daxing Prefecture? Are there many beauties? By the way, boss, I heard that the terrain in Daxing Prefecture is different with a lot of water. Will we encounter any trouble? And boss, if we encounter trouble when looking for people, can we use force? Can we kill people? Will it cause trouble between our Daming Prefecture and Daxing Prefecture? The two of them traveled eastward, moving quickly and covertly, crossing the Great Marshall Prefecture, and finally arriving at the border of Daxing Prefecture. Chapter 3708 Standing on the borderline, looking into the territory of Daxing Prefecture, Chen Fei and Chen Hua both showed surprise. Because what appeared in front of them at this moment was a vast expanse of water. At first glance, there was no end in sight, as if it were an endless sea. On the borderline, there were several docks, which were quite lively. Some people were coming and going, while others were transporting goods. Is this Daxing Prefecture? Why is it all water? Chen Hua asked in confusion. Nearby, a vendor from a tea stall saw the situation, his eyes lit up, and he immediately approached. You two are here in Daxing Prefecture for the first time, right? Yes, it's our first time. Give us an introduction, and if it's good, you'll be rewarded. As he spoke, Chen Hua took out a bag of elemental stones and weighed it in his hand. Seeing this, the vendor's eyes gleamed and he enthusiastically began to introduce. After listening, Chen Fei and Chen Hua finally understood that this water area was indeed Daxing Prefecture. 
or rather, the vast majority of the territory of Daxing Prefecture was covered by seawater, with less than 1% of actual land area, and it was not even connected together, but rather a collection of small islands scattered across this expanse of water. Because most of it was water, the majority of Daxing Prefecture's residents were fishermen, making a living by fishing, and the shipbuilding industry was also very developed. Daxing Prefecture not only produced various types of fish and aquatic products, but also, due to the terrain, there were some mineral resources in the sea that other large prefectures did not have, which were quite valuable. Of course, due to the limitations of the terrain, Daxing Prefecture was also very lacking in many other things. Because of this, the commercial atmosphere in Daxing Prefecture was very strong, with various trade transactions constantly occurring and merchants coming and going. This was also the reason why this dock was so lively. If you too want to do business, I suggest going to Black Snake Island. It is the largest island in this sea area and also the trading center nearby, where many goods and people are circulating. There's a ferry to Black Snake Island every hour. If you too want to leave, you can buy tickets now. The vendor enthusiastically recommended. Chinhua glanced at Chin Fei, received a confirming look, and said to the vendor, Then let's go to Black Snake Island. Please help us get two tickets. After speaking, Chinhua threw a small bag of elemental stones to the vendor. Both of you, have a cup of tea here and wait for a moment. I'll go buy tickets for you right away. The vendor poured tea for the two, and then went to buy tickets. Not long after, the vendor returned with two tickets. Both gentlemen, the tickets are bought. The price of one ticket is 100 elemental stones. It costs a total of 200 elemental stones, leaving 130 elemental stones. Please check them. Chinhua took the tickets and elemental stones, glanced at them, collected the tickets, and handed the elemental stones to the vendor. The quantity is correct, and the rest of these will be considered as a reward for your hard work. Although the two hadn't left yet, with their strength, they could still hear many conversations, so they had already figured out the ticket price. Seeing that the vendor did not pocket the elemental stones, they rewarded him. Thank you very much, gentlemen, the vendor repeatedly thanked. After finishing the last sip of tea, Chin Huo and Chin Fei got up and walked towards the dock. After boarding the passenger ship for a while, the ship set sail. Heading forward through the waves, without encountering any accidents, an hour later, the ship arrived at Black Snake Island. The two descended, and the first thing they felt was a strong smell of fishiness, mixed with a lot of blood. Walking inward from the dock, the first thing that caught their eyes was a huge market, with many merchants selling various goods inside. Chin Fei led Chin Hua, passing through the blood and fishy smell all the way and finally arrived in front of a small shop called Joe's Sea Fish. What would you like, sirs? We have all kinds of sea fish in our shop, with fair prices and good quality. The attendant asked enthusiastically. Chin Fei said indifferently, no sea fish. I'd like to have some sun and moon clear tea. Um. The attendant's movements paused for a moment, staring at Chin Fei for a few moments, and said in a deep voice, the goods are inside, follow me gentlemen. Chin Fei nodded and led Chin Hua into the house. Boss, what's going on? Chin Hua asked. Chin Fei explained through voice transmission, this is a secret point of the Daming Prefecture. The previous information came out through them. Entering the house, Chin Fei took out the token, once again proving his identity, and then explained the purpose of their visit. The other party quickly found the information about Xin Yuan Jia Shan and Qingmu Palace Master and handed it to Chen Fei. Chen Fei nodded in thanks, then left and returned to the dock. So, for almost three full days, Chen Fei and Chen Hua kept boarding and disembarking, moving among one island after another. They themselves were somewhat unsure of where they were exactly. However, one thing was certain. They were getting farther and farther away from the coastline of Dada Prefecture. At the beginning, Chinhua was quite excited about the rare sea scenery, 
but after three days, he couldn't help but feel a little tired. Coupled with the mediocre food on the boat, this made Xinhua complain even more. All right, stop complaining. We've arrived. On the evening of the third day, the two landed on an island called White Moon. Finding the secret point of the Daming Prefecture on the island again, Chen Fei directly stated their purpose. The secret point immediately found all the relevant information. About seven days ago, our people accidentally saw two individuals in front of the Moon Auction House on White Moon Island who were quite similar to the people you were looking for, so they reported the news. After hearing this, Chen Fei asked, Is that all? No more recent or specific information. The secret point explained, My lord, you may not know this, but we don't have many personnel in Daxing Prefecture, and coupled with the special terrain of Daxing Prefecture, it's not easy to transmit information. So it's very difficult to obtain information. While White Moon Island is the largest island in this sea area and also a trading center, Many people live on their respective small islands and only come to White Moon Island once in a while. After purchasing the supplies, everyone will leave directly by boat. On the sea, it's very difficult for us to track and capture the movements of the other party. So this is all the information we have. Seeming to worry about Chen Fei's reaction, the secret point paused for a moment and immediately added. However, it's not that there's no information at all. Some things can still be roughly inferred. Chen Fei raised an eyebrow. Go on. It's like this. We speculate that the people you're looking for are probably staying by the side of some wealthy and powerful individuals. Because the Moon Auction House is quite high class, the items auctioned there are all good stuff, and ordinary people don't have the qualifications to participate. Seven days ago, just to enter the auction, one had to pay a deposit of 5 million elemental stones. This is not something ordinary people can afford. If the other party participated in this auction, their identity is definitely not ordinary. And the Moon Auction House will hold another auction a week later. The highlight of this auction will be a Yuan Dan of a first-level embryonic realm sea beast. Such a fine product, even at the Moon Auction House, might only appear once a year. If the other party participated in the bidding last time, it's highly likely they won't miss this auction either and will definitely come again. After listening, Chen Fei pondered slightly, knowing that the best course of action now is to wait. So he nodded and said, then let's wait for another seven days. Chapter 3709 Next, Chen Fei and Chen Hu found it in a stay in on White Moon Island. Apart from occasionally inquiring about information at the secret point, the rest of the time was spent wandering around the island, getting to know its customs and appearance. One day, after lunch, the two began strolling down the street. Unconsciously, they walked to a particular street. Chinua looked around at the shops on the street and wondered, Boss, why are the shops here so strange? Why hang lanterns in broad daylight? Chin Fei followed his gaze and noticed several houses along the road with doors half open and red lanterns hanging. Before Chin Fei could figure out what was going on, the young woman walked out of a nearby house and approached them with a coy smile. You two gentlemen don't look like locals. Are you newcomers to our White Moon Island? She asked. Chin Hua smiled. We're here for business and sightseeing. Do you have anything fun here? As soon as she heard this, the woman giggled and approached Chin Hua, Gentlemen, my family has something fun. Why don't you come in and try? Seeing this, Chin Fei and Chin Hua immediately understood what these shops with lanterns were all about. Chin Fei wanted to quicken their pace to leave, but then other nearby shops noticed the commotion, and one by one, they started soliciting customers. Gentlemen, come to my house for an experience. The girls here are much younger and prettier. Two gentlemen, the experience in our house is very rich. Whatever your request, we can satisfy it. Our house is all legitimate fisherwomen who also moonlight. It's unique. Don't you want to experience it? Chen Hu was being tempted and was almost unable to control himself. But just then, 
A commotion came from ahead, and many people rushed out and ran forward. The Penlai Pavilion is open. Hurry, or you won't get a seat. I heard the Penlai Pavilion has gotten new goods again. I wonder what kind of beauties they are. Don't worry about the goods at the Penlai Pavilion. They're definitely top-notch. It's just a pity that they're destined for rich young masters, and we commoners have no chance. Don't think too much about it. It's good to have a look and satisfy your eyes. True. With such momentum, Chen Hua's attention was immediately drawn away. Boss, there are beauties. Should we go and take a look? Chen Fei wasn't in a hurry. He took out a small bag of elemental stones and said to the women soliciting customers around him, Who can explain to me what's going on here? This bag of elemental stones belongs to whoever can tell me. Seeing the money, the women who had been somewhat unhappy and muttering immediately changed their faces and started talking. Gentlemen, the Palai Pavilion is the most well-known brothel on our White Moon Island. It's high class, only opens once a month, and each time only introduces one new person, so the quantity is very limited. However, although the quantity is small, the women in the Palai Pavilion are all carefully selected top-tier beauties, each one stunning. Especially on the day when a new person is introduced, countless rich young masters and powerful people vie to hold the beauty in their arms and be the first to enjoy her. It can be said that the Penglai Pavilion is the dream place of all men on White Moon Island. Of course, most people can only dream. The number of people who can actually enter is very few, and they are either rich or noble. After listening to the explanation, Chen Fei understood what the Pulai Pavilion was all about and threw the elemental stones to those women. On the side, Chen Hua, after listening to all this, became even more excited, and his eyes almost sparkled. Boss, the Pulai Pavilion sounds like a great place. Shouldn't we go and take a look? Seemingly concerned that Chen Fei might not agree, Chen Hua quickly found a reason, saying, Boss, didn't that secret agent say it before? The person we're looking for is either rich or noble. And the Penglai Pavilion is basically where the wealthy and powerful gather. Maybe we can find some clues there. Chen Fei pondered slightly and felt that there might be some possibility. So he nodded and said, let's go take a look. Wise decision, boss, Chen Hua said with a happy smile, picking up the pace. Soon, the two arrived in front of the Ping Lai Pavilion, a three-story wooden building decorated beautifully, with a fragrant scent wafting from it. At the moment, there was a crowd of people at the door, all craning their necks to look at the building. At the entrance, there were sturdy men in uniforms, stationed there with stern expressions. Chen Fei and Chen Hua quietly separated from the crowd and made their way to the door. Two burly men immediately intercepted them. Hold it. Step back. This time, Chen Ho was unhappy and said displeasedly, What do you mean? We're customers. Can't we go in? Customers. The burly man looked them up and down with a hint of mockery in his eyes, clearly not believing them. The entrance ticket to our Palai Pavilion starts at a minimum of 1 million yuan stones each. Can you afford it? After saying that, the two burly men crossed their arms, looking mocking and scornful. Many people around were also whispering and discussing in low voices. You can tell they're outsiders who don't know the rules of the Penglai Pavilion. See, they're going to get beaten up. These kinds of people, we see them several times a year, it's not surprising. We're all men here, we understand. Amidst the discussions, the burly men stepped forward. But at this moment, Chen Fei took out two elemental stones and threw them to the men, asking, Is this enough? Two elemental stones? Are you here to cause trouble? The burly man became furious, looking like he was about to attack. However, someone nearby exclaimed, Wait, look, these are top quality obsidian elemental stones, worth at least as much as one million ordinary elemental stones. Instantly, the two burly men's expressions changed. That's enough. That's enough. Two esteemed guests, please come in. You two esteemed guests are here for the first time. 
We have many attractions in our establishment. Let me introduce them to you. The people who had been whispering and joking around just now were dumbfounded when they saw this scene, feeling both angry and envious. Damn it, turns out they're rich people. Why pretend to be ordinary people then? Are they mocking us? Two million, just casually taken out like that. It's good to be rich. I wonder if these two outsiders will get their hands on the new goods at the Peng Lai Pavilion this time. You're thinking too much. It's just two million for admission tickets. We have plenty of rich young masters on our moon island who can afford that. The two entered the building and were led to a table. Soon after, beautiful maids with exquisite features brought various delicious snacks and drinks to them. Shinhua looked at the maid, his eyes gleaming. Even just the maids are so beautiful. The real courtesans must be even more stunning. Boss, I'm getting a bit impatient. Chun Fei, however, didn't pay attention to these things, but instead let his consciousness expand silently, quietly scanning the entire building. Chapter 3710 Retracting his consciousness, Chin Fei relaxed a bit. Just now, he had already investigated and found that there were many cultivators in the Palai Pavilion, but most of them were around the sixth level of the Elemental Soul Realm. There were only a few who had reached the Elemental Infant Realm, and they were all at the first or second level. With such strength, they posed no threat to Chin Fei at the moment. After eating and drinking for a while and waiting for the tea to brew, several more people entered the pavilion. Glancing over them, they were all middle-aged men with big bellies, seemingly of decent status. The limited seating in the pavilion was now filled, and no more people were allowed in. The real show began. The people of the Ping Lai Pavilion naturally knew why everyone was here, so without delay, they went straight to the point. We at the Ping Lai Pavilion thank all the distinguished guests for their presence. Recently, we have acquired a special and exquisite beauty. Today marks her debut appearance, and we ask for everyone's support. As the words fell, a light and melodious music played. Then, in the center of the pavilion, a graceful figure emerged slowly from behind the veil. With each step forward, the veil covering her slid down a bit, gradually revealing the woman's body. First was a head of slightly curly dark green hair, which caught the eyes of many. Next, beneath the hair, appeared a delicate and exquisite face, beautiful and magnificent, instantly igniting the enthusiasm of many guests. Such beauty, I'm captivated. I must have heard a day. This face is no less than that of M.O.U. from last year. Even Chin Fei couldn't help but show a surprised expression at this moment and couldn't help but take a few more glances. Seeing this, Chin was smirked and nudged Chin Fei's arm. Boss, are you smitten? Today, take her down. Don't worry, I won't tell the wives. You're overthinking it. Chin Fei gave Chin Hua a glance. The reason he had been somewhat distracted just now was that he felt that the woman on stage seemed to exude a special aura, mysterious and inexplicable, which made Chin Fei somewhat intrigued. The woman continued forward, and the veil continued to slide down. Thus, the woman's graceful neck, exquisite collarbone, and voluptuous upper body all were of top-tier quality. Many guests at the scene had eyes gleaming with excitement and were already eager to try. And just then, the music suddenly paused and the movements on stage stopped abruptly as if time had been paused in that moment. The eager guests were momentarily puzzled, about to ask what had happened and why the performance had stopped. At this moment, a clear, crisp sound rang out, the music changed, and the performance resumed. The veil covering the woman's lower body suddenly fluttered up, completely revealing her lower half to everyone present. At this moment, all the guests in the audience were stunned, their faces showing astonishment and shock. What? What is that? What's going on? Even Shin Fei's face flashed with surprise at this moment. Because, at this moment on stage, the stunning woman's lower half was not a pair of slender legs, but rather a shape resembling that of a fishtail. 
Mermaid? How could there be a mermaid here? At this moment, even Shin Fei couldn't help but shake his head gently in amazement. Watching the excited and astonished guests, the shopkeeper of the Pin Lai Pavilion, with a smile on his face, stepped forward and said, Distinguished guests, this exquisite beauty is a mermaid rescued by our Pin Lai Pavilion from the sea a month ago. I believe everyone has heard of mermaids. It is said that millions of years ago, a human cultivator and a sea maiden fell in love, united, and eventually gave birth to descendants, forming the mermaid clan. Legend has it that mermaids are beautiful and enchanting, with melodious voices that guide passing ships away from disaster. And fortunate individuals may be chosen by mermaids to spend a night together, experiencing both physical and cultivation fulfillment. This is a famous beautiful legend passed down in the waters above our Daxing prefecture. However, the mermaid clan is scarce in number, very few people ever get to see them, let alone spend a pleasant night with them. This time, our Palai Pavilion has finally made the legend come true. The scene was lively, and many guests were excited. After all, those who could come here must have seen plenty of stunning beauties. But a special mermaid beauty like this was a first for many. Coupled with various rumors and Daxing Prefecture, the guests present were all flushed with excitement. I'll take this little mermaid. Brother Chen, I let you have the courtesan last month. This time, don't compete with me. Wong, the one from last time can't compare to this one. If you let me have her again, I won't compete with you for the courtesans for the next six months. Go to the shop and get the money. I'm going all out this time. Amidst the excitement and clamor, only Chin Fei and Chin Hu remained relatively calm. Chin Hu whispered, Boss, do you think this mermaid beauty thing is real? It sounds a bit far-fetched. Chin Fei nodded, it should be real. However, the rumors are probably false. It's not about a human cultivator and a fish maiden falling in love, but rather a sea demon who has achieved cultivation success and transformed into this. Hearing this, Chin Hu suddenly understood. After all, he himself was a fire dragon transformed into human form. Back in the Great Flame Realm, he had seen many transformed demons. Lightly nodding, Chen Hua stared at the mermaid on stage for a few more glances, then suddenly frowned. Seeing this, Chen Fei asked, What's wrong? Is something amiss? Chen Hua spoke up, Boss, how should we deal with this mermaid beauty? She doesn't have, a uh? Cough, you... Shin Fei thought he had discovered something serious, but unexpectedly, he asked about this, almost causing him to spit out his tea. But just then, from the VIP seats on the second floor, someone really spoke up. Shopkeeper, this mermaid beauty is indeed good, but it seems a bit impractical. Everyone present understood what that meant and burst into laughter. The shopkeeper, evidently prepared, smiled and said, Regarding this matter, everyone can rest assured. The mermaid clan can also take human form. So naturally, they can do whatever you want them to. After saying this, the shopkeeper added, Of course, if someone has certain special preferences, those can also be accommodated. Instantly, laughter filled the scene again, everyone having a great time. Only Chin Fei noticed that the mermaid beauty on stage although still wearing a standard smile on her face, had a hint of sadness in her eyes. Chapter 3711 After the laughter subsided, the shopkeeper officially began the auction. Palai Pavilion's courtesan auction starts at a base price of 5 million yuan stones, with increments of at least 100,000 yuan stones. Now, let the bidding begin. As soon as the shopkeeper's words fell, a series of bids rang out one after another. I bid 5 million, 6 million, 7 million. Don't bother competing anymore. I bid 10 million. The prices skyrocketed rapidly. With each bid, the price quickly rose to 30 million yuan stones. At this price, the bidding finally slowed down and only a few people remained. 32 million. A slightly hesitant middle-aged man called out the price. However, as soon as he made his bid, 
A young man in elegant attire with a folding fan immediately followed suit. 35 million. The middle-aged man hesitated slightly upon hearing this price and glanced at the young man with the folding fan across from him. 36 million. But before he could respond, the voice from the other side rang out again. 38 million. Now, the middle-aged man's face twitched uncontrollably as he couldn't help but stare fiercely at the young man with the folding fan across from him. The young man across from him remained unfazed, wearing a calm expression as he shook his fan and chuckled, Lord Huang, why are you looking at me like that? If you want the beauty, just continue bidding. Hearing this, Lord Huang's face flashed with anger, but he suppressed his anger and said, my family's wealth is no match for Master Gu, the young master of the Moon Auction House. If Master Gu wants the person, then I will stop here. Lord Huang's words were quite tactful. He knew that with the other party's status, he couldn't possibly outdo him in terms of wealth. So he deliberately presented an attitude of withdrawing from the competition as long as the other party spoke up. This way, if Master Gu didn't want to offend him or sell him face by stopping the bidding, he would voluntarily cease bidding. Of course, if Master Gu didn't care about his status and continued bidding, Lord Huang could explain himself even if he didn't win the beauty. He could even gain favor with the other party. After all, his previous words could be interpreted as giving Master Gu face and voluntarily withdrawing from the bidding. It could be said that Lord Huang's words placed himself in an invincible position. However, Lord Huang's plan didn't work. Master Gu waved his fan and said, What family background? What status? They're meaningless here. Since everyone is here to have fun, just bid according to the rules. Whoever has the money takes the person. As for anything else, let's not talk about it. This statement was like a slap in the face, harshly striking Lord Huang's face. Clearly, Master Gu had no intention of withdrawing from the competition and didn't intend to give face to Lord Huang. Lord Huang was so angry that he almost slammed the table and stood up, his aura fluctuating, ready to take action. Seeing the tension in the atmosphere, the shopkeeper quickly stepped forward to mediate. Both of you, calm down. We're all acquaintances here. There's no need to get so worked up over a woman. As the conversation went on, the shopkeeper quickly sent someone to serve tea, while also gesturing towards the stage. Then, a burst of music sounded, and the stunning mermaid on the stage began to dance gracefully. Amidst the music, the mermaid's figure was light and graceful, her delicate body moving elegantly, appearing as if she were swimming in water, giving people a different kind of enjoyment. After the dance ended, the mermaid's movement stopped, and she stood in the center of the stage, breathing slightly, her cheeks flushed. Obviously, the dance just now took quite a toll on her. At this moment, after being comforted by the shopkeeper, Lord Huang's emotions calmed down. Without looking at young Master Gu, he picked up a teacup and started to drink, effectively withdrawing from the bidding. Seeing this, a smile played at the corner of young Master Gu's mouth as he bid again, I bid 40 million. Indeed, this time Lord Huang didn't continue bidding. The scene fell silent. The shopkeeper looked around and announced, Young Master Gu bids 40 million. If no one bids higher than Young Master Gu, then the first knight of the Penglai Pavilion's courtesan will belong to Young Master Gu. Just then, a voice suddenly came from a corner. 50 million. Instantly, everyone's gaze turned towards the direction of the voice. Then they saw the bidder, who turned out to be the two unfamiliar faces from earlier today. As a result, many people started whispering to each other. Young Master Gu, who was originally smiling, now had a slightly darkened expression. Even Shen Hua, at this moment, looked at Shen Fei with surprise. Boss, are you interested in that mermaid? Shen Fei whispered, I have my reasons. Reasons? Shen Hua widened his eyes. Boss, I didn't expect you to play like this. Could it be that you usually? Chin Fei gave Chin Hua a disdainful look. 
You're overthinking it. I have business to attend to. Chin Ho rolled his eyes, obviously not believing him. At this moment, after a brief moment of surprise, the shopkeeper, with a smile on his face, continued, This guest bids 50 million. Is there anyone? Before he could finish speaking, young Master Gu bid again, 55 million. I'm taking her. After saying that, young Master Gu glared fiercely at Chin Fei. Ignoring him, Chin Fei calmly stated, 60 million. Young Master Gu's eyes began to redden as he gritted his teeth, 65 million. Chin Fei remained expressionless, 100 million. The price soared directly, astonishing everyone present. Young Master Gu slammed the table and stood up, glaring fiercely at Chin Fei. You dare to compete with me. Chin Fei glanced at young Master Gu and said indifferently, didn't young Master Gu say it earlier? Since it's for fun, bidding according to the rules is the way to go. I'm bidding according to the rules. Does young Master Gu want to break the rules? After all, it was young Master Gu's own words earlier. He couldn't deny them. After giving Chin Fei a fierce look, young Master Gu left in a huff. Chin Fei looked at the shopkeeper and asked, Shopkeeper, can the auction continue? The shopkeeper was momentarily stunned but continued. Obviously, no one wanted to continue bidding after a bid of 100 million yuan. After all, while the Pinglai Pavilion's courtesan was indeed outstanding, there was one every month, and the previous courtesans typically sold for around 30 million yuan. Reaching 40 million was considered top-notch. This time, because it was a rare mermaid, everyone's interest was heightened, bidding up to 50 million, which was already a record-breaking price. However, no one expected this outsider to disregard the rules and directly double the price to an outrageous 100 million yuan. 100 million yuan for the first night with a courtesan, even the wealthy attendees found it absurd. Chapter 3712 Chin Fei paid no attention to the surrounding gossip and went to settle the bill. Initially, the shopkeeper had some doubts about Chin Fei's ability to pay, but when he saw Chin Fei casually take out a considerable amount of high-quality elemental stones, his attitude became even more respectful. Even many guests around, upon seeing this scene, had slight changes in their expressions and started whispering among themselves. That young man's wealth is impressive. Does anyone know who he is? To casually produce a 100 million, it must be one of those big families or sections. It's unlikely to be an ordinary person. Should we investigate? Don't stir up trouble. If someone can produce so much money, they must be formidable. If you investigate, are you looking for trouble for yourself? Chen Fei's expression didn't change much. After all, for him now, money was just a number not to mention the resources he could use within the Great Ming Prefecture. Just consider all the opponents Chen Fei had defeated and the spoils he had collected over the years of various conflicts. It amounted to astronomical figures. Therefore, this hundred million elemental stones was really insignificant to him. After paying the bill, Chen Fei didn't waste any time and went straight to the mermaid on the stage. Come here. The mermaid was stunned for a moment, then lowered her head respectfully and walked over to Chin Fei. The shopkeeper hurriedly took the initiative to lead the way. Sir, we have prepared the room. If you need to rest, I'll take you there. Lead the way, Chin Fei said lightly. Arriving at the third floor of the attic, the shopkeeper smiled. Sir, the room is inside. Please enjoy your stay. If you need anything, just let me know. I'll take my leave first. Chin Fei waved his hand, letting the shopkeeper leave. Then, he directly pushed open the door with the mermaid following behind. Behind him, Chen Hua hurriedly followed. Boss, are you in such a hurry? Don't forget about me. Seeing this, the mermaid's expression changed, and she couldn't help but whisper softly, Are the two of us going together? However, she quickly realized something and immediately lowered her head, remaining silent. 
After all, the other party was not only the benefactor in terms of money, she had to fulfill any request he made. Even if it wasn't for two people, even if it wasn't for humans, she still had to comply. Chin Fei glanced at the anxious Chin Hua and said, Find someone for yourself while I'm busy. With that, Chin Fei was about to usher them out. Chin Hua became somewhat anxious this time. Boss, you can't hog it all to yourself. Chin Fei gave Chin Hua a disdainful look. You're overthinking it. I have business to attend to. Seeing this, Chin Hua could only shake his head and retreat. He went downstairs and found the shopkeeper, a him, Boss, your shop. Inside the guest room, after Chin Fei closed the door, he turned around. The mermaid looked at Chin Fei, who was getting closer, evidently quite nervous. She couldn't help but take a deep breath, then forced a smile and stood up, saying, Young master, shall I serve you for your bath? However, Chin Fei made a gesture for her to silence and shook his head gently. Don't speak. Then, Chin Fei bypassed the mermaid and walked towards the window of the guest room. He carefully inspected it, then swiftly arranged a simple formation. Once everything was set up, Chin Fei looked at the mermaid and said, Okay, now you can speak. The mermaid beauty looked at Chin Fei cautiously and said, Young master, what would you like? I am here to serve you. Chin Fei waved his hand. Just sit down. Huh. The mermaid was taken aback but obediently sat down. Chin Fei asked, firstly, introduce yourself. The mermaid said, I am called Immo Li, a member of the mermaid clan, 20 years old this year. I. Chin Fei interrupted Immo Li's words with a wave of his hand. Don't say those scripted words you were taught in the shop. Tell me your true identity and origin. Upon hearing this, Emo Lee couldn't help but freeze, bowing her head and remaining silent for a moment. Seeing her reaction, Chin Fei squinted his eyes and said, You are probably not a member of the mermaid clan, but a sea monster that is cultivated into human form, and you didn't come to Ping Lai Pavilion willingly. Young master, you. Emo Lee looked at Chin Fei in surprise, her expression changing. Chin Fei softened his voice. Don't worry. I will help you. After saying this, Chin Fei actively released a powerful aura. My strength is enough to help you leave. Emoli felt Chin Fei's sincerity and strength. Tears welled up in her eyes as she said with a choked voice, Young master, I am indeed not a member of the mermaid clan. Soon, Emoli recounted her experience. Chin Fei listened quietly, finding it similar to his speculation. Emoli was originally a talented sea monster in the sea. After accidentally drifting away from the group during a tide, she encountered a human merchant ship, was captured by them, and brought to Baiwei Island. Due to her good looks and figure, she was sold to Pinglai Pavilion. Emoli naturally thought of escaping, but she had only recently cultivated her form, and her strength was probably around the fifth level of the elemental soul realm. She couldn't compete with the numerous experts in Palai Pavilion. In the end, after some training and packaging, Emo Lee was made into a new generation of courtesans by Palai Pavilion, fetching the sky-high price today. After listening, Chen Fei looked at Emo Lee and said, In that case, you should be able to transform your fish half into human form. Emo Lee nodded. I have successfully cultivated and can fully transform. The reason why I am like this is at the request of the shopkeeper. He said it could maintain the mystery and attract more distinguished guests. As she spoke, Emo Lee's lower body underwent some changes, transforming into a pair of fair, long legs. Emo Lee also visibly sighed with relief, evidently finding this form more comfortable. However, Chin Fei felt a bit embarrassed at this moment. Because, after Emo Lee's transformation, Although her upper body was still covered with a layer of light gauze, she had nothing on her lower body, fully exposed in front of Chin Fei. Chin Fei casually summoned a bedsheet and handed it to Emoli. Emoli was first stunned, then she looked down and realized what had happened. Her cheeks immediately flushed, hastily wrapped herself in the bedsheet. 
The atmosphere in the room suddenly became somewhat awkward. Cough, cough. Chin Fei broke the tension, saying, All right, I understand your background now. Now, I'm going to get to business. Hearing this, Emo Lee pursed her lips and took off the bedsheet on her body. Cough, cough. You get dressed. That's not what I meant. Chin Fei hurriedly said, It's like this. I have a question I want to ask you. Young master, please go ahead, Emily said. Chin Fei seemed to feel a bit awkward about asking and organized his thoughts before speaking. Emily, after you finished your dance on stage, there was a special scent emanating from you. Do you know what that was? A special scent? Emily looked puzzled, shaking her head. I'm not sure what you mean, young master. Chapter 3713 This Chin Fei couldn't describe it for a moment. It's like the smell after exercising. A faint scent of sweat, but not exactly, anyway. This. Emo Lee couldn't pinpoint it either. The two of them were at a loss for words. At this moment, Emo Lee, being quick-witted, thought of something. She stood up and walked to Chin Fei, saying, Young master, how about I dance for you again? Maybe that will help figure it out. Chin Fei immediately applauded upon hearing this. That's a great idea. However, just as he applauded, he noticed that as Emily stood up, the bedsheet covering her lower body slipped down, revealing a magnificent scene in front of Chin Fei. Cough, cough. Chin Fei hurriedly reminded her. Finally, after rummaging around the room for a while, they managed to find a long skirt for Emily to put on, which improved the situation. After putting on the clothes, Emily began to dance. Chin Fei watched attentively. Although Emo Lee's dance was quite beautiful and paired with her extraordinary figure, it appeared enticing. However, Chin Fei frowned slightly because the scent he was anticipating still hadn't appeared. It wasn't until the last movement, when Emo Lee's cheeks turned slightly red and tiny beads of sweat formed on her neck, that Chin Fei's expression changed. Yes, it's the scent. As he spoke, Chin Fei couldn't help but lean towards Emo Li and sniff. And thus, he became even more certain. It was a very light fragrance that gradually emanated from Emo Li's body as she moved, drifting in the air, giving people a special sensation. When he smelled the scent under the stage, Chin Fei immediately felt a movement in his sea of consciousness. The aura of his soul in the sea of consciousness became active, and it seemed to have strengthened slightly. It's worth noting that cultivating the soul is much more difficult than cultivating elemental energy. With the help of Lord Tianming and the many treasures he obtained along the way, Chen Fei's cultivation of elemental energy went smoothly. He even surpassed many controllers in terms of reserves. But in terms of the soul, progress was much slower. Although Chen Fei's soul was much stronger than that of an ordinary cultivator, and his cultivation speed was much faster. Overall, the progress of his soul was still slower than that of his elemental energy. Of course, this was also because Chen Fei's cultivation of elemental energy progressed too quickly, combined with his relatively short cultivation time. After all, those top experts in the elemental realm have been cultivating for tens of thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of years. Even those who have been cultivating for only a few hundred years are considered newcomers when facing top experts in the elemental realm. However, facing various crises and responsibilities, Chen Fei always felt that his strength was not enough and wanted to continue to cultivate diligently. Therefore, now that he had encountered something that could help with soul cultivation, Chin Fei naturally attached great importance to it and was willing to spend a lot of money and offend the local rich young man just to acquire Emo Li. At this moment, Chin Fei was almost leaning towards Emo Li, his face excited. It's the scent, Emo Li. How do you get this scent? Emo Li paused for a moment, carefully discerned it again, then activated her elemental energy and released a burst of energy, asking, Young master, is this scent you're referring to? Chen Fei leaned in for a sniff, his expression even more excited. Yes, this is the scent. It's much stronger than before. This is it. Emoli explained, 
young master. This synth is not innate to me. It was about a year ago, when I was about to transform. The elders of our clan took me to a sacred place in our clan to meditate for a period of time. Later, after I successfully cultivated, I completed the transformation. The scent on my body should be what I brought out from the sacred place. Sacred place. Jin Fei's eyes lit up. What's in your sacred place, and where is it? Emoli said, Our clan's sacred place should be near the sea area where we live, but I'm not sure of the exact location. When I was taken there by the elders, my five senses were blocked until we reached the sacred place. So, then, can you take me to your clan? Chen Fei asked. Ah, well? Imoli lowered her head and whispered, Young master, I'm now a member of Polai Pavilion, and I can't leave. So, Chen Fei waved his hand and said, That's not a big problem. I'll redeem you, and you can take me to your clan. Young master, Emoli was both surprised and delighted, but don't worry, I promise, I'll definitely do what I said. You rest well, and tomorrow morning I'll redeem you. If it weren't for fear of arousing suspicion, Shin Fei would have wanted to redeem Emoli right away. Don't think too much, just rest. Shin Fei glanced at Emoli, then crossed his legs and began to meditate. While Chen Fei rested, in a private room outside Ping Lai Pavilion, the middle-aged man Huang, who had just been at odds in the auction, and the rich second-generation Gu, were sitting facing each other. Huang, have you found out about that person's information? Gu asked in a deep voice. Huang replied, we just found out. Those two guys are from out of town. They entered our Daxing Prefecture from Dada Prefecture eight days ago. They claimed to be tourists. Tourists? I don't think so. Gu sneered. The strength of those two is definitely above the fifth stage of the elemental soul realm. Such people, coming all the way to our Daxing prefecture just to sightsee? Huang didn't make a judgment but asked, What's your plan, young master Gu? Gu slammed down his wine glass, his eyes cold. No matter who they are or how strong they are, if they offend me, Gu Xiaonan, and Bai Wei Island, they must be taught a lesson. What is young master Gunibi to do? Huang asked. Gu said, tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. I hope the patrol team on the island will not be near Palai Pavilion. I understand. At 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, the patrol team will be patrolling near the West Pier. Young master Gu can rest assured, Huang replied. That's the best. Gu nodded. One night passed, and the next morning, Chen Fei woke up. He woke up Emoli and had her change into less conspicuous clothes. Then they left together. When they arrived downstairs, the innkeeper greeted them with a smile. Young master, did you have a good time last night? Was Emoli's service satisfactory? Chin Fei hugged Emoli's waist, looking satisfied. Emoli is very good. She made me very comfortable. I'm very satisfied. So, I want to take her away. Take her away. The innkeeper's face changed. I want to redeem Emoli, Chen Fei said. Redeem her. The innkeeper looked hesitant. Young master, Emoli is the courtesan of our polite pavilion. It has cost us a lot to train her, and she was just introduced yesterday, this. Name your price. Chen Fei interrupted. Young master, this isn't about money, it's... The innkeeper was still hesitant. Chapter 3714 Chin Fei took out a bag of high-grade elemental stones and threw it in front of the innkeeper. Five billion, is that enough? Ah, this. The innkeeper was surprised, then continued, Young master, our boss values Emoli very much. Also, all the young masters on the island are waiting for Emoli. Many reservations have been made for her, so if she leaves, this. Seven billion. Chin Fei directly raised the bid. I didn't expect the young master to be so fond, but the innkeeper was still making excuses. Chen Fei frowned, looking displeased. Ten billion. Don't waste my time with excuses. I don't like trouble. The innkeeper paused for a moment, then filled his face with a smile and said, Since the young master values Emoli so much, our Palai Pavilion is willing to make an exception. Miss Emoli, 
You belong to the young master from now on. After the payment was completed, Shen Fei was about to leave with him only. At this moment, Shen Hu, yawning, walked out of a room with a young lady. Boss, you're up so early. Didn't get enough rest? Shen Fei waved his hand and said, Tidy up, we're leaving. After speaking, Shen Fei was about to leave with Amoli. Boss, why the rush? Shen Hu said, then realized something. Boss, did you redeem Miss Mo? Shen Fei nodded. Ten billion. Shen Hu widened his eyes. Boss, you're so generous. Is Miss Mo so amazing that you're enchanted? Shen Fei couldn't explain this well, so he just glared at Shen Hu. Stop talking nonsense, hurry up. So, the three of them left Penglai Pavilion together. Of course, to avoid trouble, Chen Fei found a large cloak with a hood for Emoli, covering her almost entirely. But even so, when the three of them left, they still attracted a lot of attention. After all, the auction of the mermaid courtesan yesterday had caused quite a stir on Baiwei Island. Some people even followed secretly. Seeing this, Chen Fei quickened his pace and signaled to Chen Hu. Chen Hu nodded lightly and left. A moment later, Chen Hu returned, clapped his hands, and said to Chen Fei, Boss, I've dealt with the people following us. Where are we going now? Back to the inn. Chen Fei was about to speak when suddenly, a strong wind came whistling, aiming directly at Chen Fei's lower abdomen and Dantian. Be careful, enemy attack. Chen Fei reminded, regardless of the opponent's attack, he directly slapped towards the source of the strong wind. The attacker obviously didn't expect Chen Fei to react like this. Caught off guard, he screamed and fell to the ground. At the same time, several figures rushed out from the side and behind. Chen Fei and Chen Hu acted again, knocking them down. All of this happened very quickly, in just a few seconds. Chen Fei lifted one of the attackers and asked coldly, Who sent you? We're just rogues trying to make some money on the road. Nobody sent us. The attacker looked tough. Chen Fei said coldly, A fifth stage elemental soul realm expert robbing for money? Do you think I'm a fool? The attacker remained silent, showing a resolute refusal to speak. Chen Fei didn't bother wasting words either. His chi transformed into silver needles and pierced into the attacker's body. Soon, cries of extreme agony filled the air. After a while, Chen Fei threw the unconscious attacker to the ground and clapped his hands. Gu Xiaonan. Chen Hu asked, Boss, is it the Gu Xiaonan from yesterday's auction? Do you want to teach him a lesson? I heard his father is the owner of the Moon Auction House and has a high status on Bai Wei Island. Chen Fei hesitated for a moment, then shook his head. Forget it, let's focus on the task at hand. At the moment, Chen Fei's only concern was the underwater sacred place mentioned by Emo Li, so he didn't want to waste time on unnecessary matters. The three returned to the inn, where Chen Fei explained to Chen Hu and then asked Emo Li about the location of her clan. After getting the directions, Chen Fei couldn't wait to set sail and find Emo Li's clan's underwater sacred place. However, Chen Fei didn't forget his mission here, which was to find his master, Xin Yuanjiangshan and the Lord of Qingmu Palace. According to the information gathered a few days ago, there might be clues when the Moon Auction House opened again. And now, there were only three days left until the next auction. Therefore, Chen Fei decided to wait for three more days before deciding to set sail and search for the underwater sacred place. Meanwhile, in a certain elegant room in a tavern, after listening to his subordinate's report, Gu Xiaonan's face darkened. You can't handle such a small matter. Master Gu, the other party concealed their strength, and our men couldn't last more than three minutes in their hands. Hearing this, Gu Xiaonan's expression changed, and he pondered. Five experts, one at the fifth stage of the elemental soul realm, and four at the third stage of the elemental soul realm. With such a lineup, they couldn't last three minutes. It seems that I underestimated that kid. His strength is more than just at the fifth stage of the elemental soul realm. Seeing this, his subordinate cautiously asked, Master Gu, D 
Do you want to send more people? Yu Xiaoan pondered for a moment and finally shook his head lightly. Let it go for now. The matters of the auction house are more important. A day later, the Moon Auction House suddenly announced a piece of news that stirred up the entire Baiwei Island. The auction house announced that due to an accident, the top item they had prepared, the first stage elemental core of a monster beast, was damaged and could not continue to be auctioned. However, the Moon Auction House did not intend to cancel or postpone the auction. Instead, they made a bold decision. They would send top hunters to the sea to personally kill the Elemental Core Sea Beast, extract the Elemental Core, and conduct an on-site auction. If customers were interested, they could go together to observe and participate in the auction on-site. The Moon Auction House would bear the travel expenses and have the auction fees. This news caused excitement among the wealthy and influential people on Baiwei Island, and discussions were endless. Soon after, a group of top rich kids from Baiwei Island announced their registration to attend the auction on site. After all, for these carefree rich second generations, this kind of experience was like an adventure trip. With someone taking the lead, many wealthy and influential people who were initially watching also signed up. For a while, signing up for this auction became a trend among the upper class of Baiwei Island. Even influenced by this, some people who couldn't afford to participate in the auction secretly planned to quietly sail along and join in the fun, hoping to pick up some bargains. Upon learning this news, Chen Fei couldn't help but frown. Is this really an accident? Going out to sea to observe, on-site auction. Is such a big fuss just for auctioning a monster beast elemental core? For a while, Chen Fei couldn't help but secretly suspect that something was amiss. However, since it was related to his master, Xin Yuanjiangshan, and the Lord of Qingmu Palace, Chen Fei finally decided to set sail and participate in the auction. Chapter 3715 At sea, Chen Fei and Chen Hu rented a small boat and sailed towards the designated area announced by the Moon Auction House. Along the way, they saw many boats passing by, including some large and exquisite ones. On these boats, young masters and misses were either fishing or hunting, or drinking and having fun, enjoying themselves. Some formidable cultivators even directly jumped into the sea, capturing sea beasts, killing them on the spot, and roasting them on the boat, eliciting bursts of laughter and joy. Clearly, many wealthy young masters and misses regarded this auction event as an ocean excursion. Chen Fei and his companion's small boat was not fast. When they reached the designated area, it was already morning on the day the auction house opened. In the center of the sea, eight large boats bearing the emblem of the moon auction house were connected to each other by iron cables, enclosing a sea area of tens of thousands of square meters in the middle. That should be the location where the Moon Auction House captured sea beasts this time. Outside, the boats of the participants in the auction surrounded them in layers. Of course, the more affluent and influential guests naturally occupied the inner positions, while those without wealth or power could only stay on the outer perimeter. Chen Fei and his group's boat naturally belonged to the outermost layer. Looking around, they could only see various large boats and the scenes inside were almost invisible. However, most of the people present had cultivation bases and could hover in the air. So, one by one, they rose into the air, circling the central sea area, forming a circular arena on the sea surface. Chen Fei also lifted off into the air with Imoli. Looking around, he saw nearly 10,000 boats densely packed, almost completely covering the sea surface. So many? I wonder if Master and Lord Qingmu are here. Chen Fei released his divine sense, searching for clues of the two amidst the dense boats. Finally, after scanning nearly half of the boats, Chen Fei captured a clear image of his Master and Lord Qingmu on a three-story luxurious large ship. They are really here. That's great. Chen Fei was overjoyed. Suppressing the urge to fly directly over, Chen Fei descended from the air with Mo Li and Chen Hu, steering the small boat towards the large ship where the two were. The position of that large ship was in the innermost circle. 
Along the way, they encountered numerous obstacles. Fortunately, Chen Fei's boat was not large, and coupled with his spending money all the way, it didn't cause much trouble. Finally, after passing through layers of boats, Chen Fei and his companions arrived near the large ship. However, when they arrived, Chen Fei stopped his actions. Because the boats in this innermost circle were mostly occupied by high-ranking officials and wealthy magnates, who could not be swayed by money alone. Boss, we're almost there. Shall we fly over directly? Chen Hu looked at the nearby boats and suggested to Chen Fei. Chen Fei shook his head. Let's not get too close for now. We don't know the situation on those boats and what Master and Lord Qingmu have encountered. Let's not act rashly. Then, Chen Fei looked around and saw someone chatting nearby, so he approached. After some idle chatter, Chen Fei joined in and casually remarked, There are many important figures at this auction. It's really enviable. Right. Those boats over there are quite grand. They must belong to someone important, right? Immediately, someone chimed in. Those are the boats of the young prince. They must belong to someone important. Young prince. Han Stin, the young prince of our lord Han Jingchuan's family, a true royal aristocrat. So powerful? Then this auction is probably a show. Others can only be supporting roles. That's not necessarily true. There are many formidable opponents this time. Many are powerful masters, and the young prince may not necessarily win. Even if these people have money, they dare not compete with the young prince. After all, he is of royal blood. You're thinking too much. This young prince doesn't sound that impressive. There are plenty of royal relatives in our Lord Han's family. Over the past tens of thousands of years, not to mention millions, there are at least tens of thousands. The truly powerful royal relatives are mostly on Daxing Island. This Han Xian doesn't belong to that category. I see. I've learned something. I wonder whose chance is bigger at this auction. You may not know this. Young Master Zhou, Miss Qin, and Mr. Yuan all have a chance. These families are all local prominent clans with histories spanning tens of thousands, even over a hundred thousand years, longer than the Han family's history. They are not to be underestimated. However, if we're talking about it, the Gu family is the true first major family in our White Moon Island. It's rumored that the Gu family has a history of over 500,000 years here. They are the true native aristocrats. Although they have dispersed and weakened in recent years, they are still formidable. But it can't be the Gu family this time. Why not? You're confused. The Moon Auction House hosting this auction is the asset of the Gu family. If they wanted to, they could handle it themselves. Is there a need for them to participate in the auction? Oh, I see. I was confused for a moment and didn't think it through. After some idle chatter, Chin Fei returned with the information he had gathered. He also didn't forget to observe the ship of the young prince Han Xian. I wonder how Master and Lord Qingmu got involved with this young prince? Were they appreciated and recruited by this young prince, or were they captured by him? Chen Fei was somewhat worried for the two. Just then, a commotion caught Chen Fei's attention. He saw several elegantly dressed men and women flying towards the young prince's ship. Wang Bin pays his respects to the young prince. Liu pays his respects to the young prince. Obviously, these were people actively trying to establish connections. Then, Chen Fei saw a chubby young man coming out. He was holding a greasy chicken leg and gnawing on it, laughing heartily when he saw the people in front of him. With a wave of his hand, he said, Don't be so formal. I like making friends. Please, have a seat. I have some freshly roasted chicken legs here. Would you like some? The visitors obviously didn't expect the young prince to be like this and were stunned, not knowing how to respond. And many people around them began to whisper, so this is young Prince Han Xian? He doesn't look distinguished at all. I heard this young prince is nothing but a fool. His biggest talent is eating, nothing else. He he, I also heard that he once apprenticed himself to a roadside vendor to learn the art of barbecue just for the sake of eating. At first, I thought it was just a rumor, but now it seems to be true. 
At this moment, Chen Fei had no interest in listening to these discussions. His gaze was fixed on Han Xian. Because, behind this chubby young prince, there was a group of people, and among them were Xian Yuan Jia Shan and Lord Qingmu that Chen Fei had been searching for tirelessly. Chapter 3716 Chen Fei suppressed the urge to acknowledge them on the spot and scrutinize the situation. He noticed that after exchanging a few words with the elegantly dressed visitors, Han Skin bid them farewell. However, these people didn't go far. Instead, they went to other large ships in the inner circle to engage in conversations. And the owners of these large ships were precisely the major families like the Zhou family, Qin family, and Yuan family that Chen Fei had just heard about in the conversation. After some conversation, many people chose to stay on board. This situation was normal, but compared to the situation with young master Han Xian just now, it carried a slightly different meaning. After all, although those elegantly dressed men and women might not be the most top-tier individuals in terms of family background and status, they were either from respectable families or possessed considerable strength, making them powerful figures. As a result, when they visited Han Xian, they just exchanged pleasantries. But when they visited other major families, many chose to stay behind. This undoubtedly showed the audience that this young master Han Xian's status in this area was not comparable to those major families. Some people who had originally planned to network here also changed their targets and headed towards the ships of the major families. For a moment, young master Han Xian's ship became quite empty. However, this chubby young master seemed completely unconcerned, enjoying himself with his subordinates, eating and drinking heartily. The onlookers couldn't help but start whispering. Most of them were mocking and puzzled by this young master. Some voices even grew louder, reaching the other ship. It drew angry glares from the guards, almost leading to violence, but Hansian stopped them. As a result, various discussions became more unrestrained. If people only thought this young master was lazy before, now they considered him weak and incompetent. After all, he didn't dare to retaliate against those who insulted him directly, completely lacking the aura of royalty. Amidst the various discussions, suddenly, a rumbling drumbeat echoed, drowning out all other sounds at the scene. Everyone looked over, and the source of the sound was the large ship of the Moon Auction House. Amidst the booming drums, the owner of the auction house, Gu Hai, rose into the air, surveyed the surroundings, and said loudly, Thank you, esteemed guests, for attending the auction hosted by my moon auction house. This time, the item we are auctioning is the Yuan Dan of the Purple Vein Shark. This sea area is precisely the habitat of the Purple Vein Shark. Later, the cultivators from our auction house will dive into hunt and collect the Yuan Dan on the spot and you esteemed guests can bid on them on the spot. With Gu Hai's words, the atmosphere on the scene gradually heated up. After all, this novel auction format was unprecedented. Of course, some people raised doubts and spoke up. Mr. Gu, didn't your auction house advertise before that the original auction item this time was the Yuan Dan of the Sea Beast in the Yuan Embryo Realm? The Purple Vein Shark is formidable among sea beasts and is considered top tier. There are few Yuan Dan of the Purple Vein Shark in the Yuan Embryo Realm, and it might be quite difficult to obtain them. This question undoubtedly voiced the doubts in many people's minds, and many turned to Gu Hai. Gu Hai seemed prepared for this, with a smile on his lips and a proud expression. He said loudly, there's no need for everyone to worry about this. I, Gu Hai. Promise you all here that this auction will indeed feature the Yuan Dan of the Purple Vein Shark in the Yuan Embryo Realm. If there aren't any, then we'll hunt until we have them. His words were bloody and domineering, shocking everyone present, and various discussions ensued. Gu Junhai surveyed the surroundings, waved his right hand, and said loudly, Xiao Nan, beat the drums. As soon as he finished speaking, Gu Xiao Nan, dressed in white, stepped onto the deck, wielding a drumstick and striking the drum forcefully. Begin! 
The booming drum beats echoed once again. Then, figures emerged from the ships in the innermost circle, hovering above the sea surface amidst the drum beats. Their chi surged crazily, connecting with each other, forming an immense and incomparable array. This scene shocked everyone once again. So many people, there must be nearly a hundred. A hundred people aren't scary. What's scary is that all of these hundred are experts, with at least the seventh level of the elemental soul realm, and most of them are around the ninth level of the elemental soul realm. Look, those four, they seem to be the four gatekeepers of the Goo family, all experts at the fourth level of the Yuan Embryo realm. Besides the four gatekeepers, isn't that Elder Gu Zhou? He has made great contributions to the Gu family, having killed over a hundred enemy experts, and he's a top-level cultivator at the seventh level of the Yuan Embryo Realm. The four gatekeepers and Elder Gu Zhou are all here. The Gu family has mobilized nearly half of their strength. Is it worth making such a big fuss over an auction? Who cares? Anyway, it's entertaining to watch. Maybe we can even pick up some bargains. Hundreds of experts from the Gu family quickly formed a massive array, covering the entire sea area. Then, all the hundreds of people injected their elemental energy together. The array immediately emitted a bright light, shooting out golden rays into the sea. The previously calm sea surface instantly churned. A surge of crimson colors rose and churned in the sea. Then, the corpses of sea beasts emerged from the water. Most of them were purple vein sharks. Immediately, someone rushed to the sea surface, blades flashing as they quickly dismembered the sea beast corpses, extracting sparkling Yuan Dan. Purple vein shark Yuan Dan, Elemental Soul Realm, Triple Level. Starting bid at 5 million. The bidding began directly on the scene. The atmosphere suddenly became lively. Various bids were continuously made and one Yuan Dan after another was quickly auctioned off. Many of the onlookers who had come from the outskirts also made some gains. Although they couldn't afford the bidding prices for the Yuan Dan, picking up a few pieces of dismembered sea beast carcasses was also good. After all, these chunks of purple vein shark meat contained a considerable amount of spiritual energy, which was beneficial for ordinary cultivators. For a while, the scene was as bustling as the sea area in the middle. But at this moment, Chen Fei's expression became solemn. He said to Chen Hua and Emoli, Be careful. Boss, what's wrong? Chen Hua asked. Chen Fei's voice was deep. There's movement underwater. Significant movement. Chen Hua was startled. Could it be the leader of the purple vein sharks? With the Gu family hunting so aggressively, it's bound to anger the purple vein shark clan. Before Chen Hua could finish his words, a huge shadow swiftly rose from the sea, then suddenly surged up, attacking the people from the Gu family. Some were caught off guard and bitten directly, swallowed by the bloodthirsty jaws of the shadow. Others were bitten in certain parts, screaming and howling in agony, shouting frantically. It's a purple vein shark, a purple vein shark in the Yuan embryo realm. The purple vein sharks are angry and ready to retaliate. Run. This scene instantly frightened the lively crowd, and many people turned pale, wanting to flee. Chapter 3717 However, amidst this chaotic situation, Gu Hai remained calm as ever. He even had a faint smile on his lips as he addressed the panicked crowd. Don't worry, everyone. These sea beasts can't harm us. After speaking, Gu Hai glanced at the elder, Gu Zhou. Gu Zhou remained expressionless, commanding in a cold voice, the four guardians, release the thunder. Upon hearing this command, the four guardians acted together. For vigorous streams of elemental energy surged forth, converging into a blue-purple thunderbolt that struck the sea surface. Instantly, flashes of lightning flickered. The huge purple vein sharks in the sea were directly hit by the lightning, flipping over onto their backs on the surface, motionless. Even many people nearby could smell the charred scent of roasted meat emanating from the purple vein sharks. Then, the four guardians descended directly, wielding their blades to slice open the heads of the purple vein sharks and extract spherical Yuan Dan with purple veins inside, 
precisely the purple vein shark Yuan Dan. Purple vein shark Yuan Dan, Yuan embryo realm, starting bid at 1 billion, with increments of no less than 1 million each. The live auction began directly on the spot, and the atmosphere quickly became lively. Especially the wealthy and noble figures in the innermost circle, who had been sitting back and watching, were now excited as well. After all, the Yuan Dan of Elemental Realm Sea Beast was quite precious even for them. Whether for cultivation or refining, it was a valuable treasure. As a result, the prices quickly soared, eventually being snapped up by the young master of the Zhou family for $5 billion. Other wealthy figures didn't lose heart either and subsequently bid similar prices for Yuan Dan of the Elemental Realm. For a while, almost every major family had at least one Yuan Dan of the Elemental Realm, reaping rich rewards. Chen Fei specifically observed and noticed that the young prince, Han Xian, didn't acquire any Yuan Dan. It wasn't that the young prince wasn't interested. He had bid several times, but each time he stopped at 4 billion, seemingly unable to continue bidding, indicating that his financial resources might not be sufficient. It seems that this young prince is indeed as rumored, not considered top tier in this area of influence. Just as Chen Fei pondered this, he suddenly felt the boat beneath him shake violently, accompanied by cries of alarm from around him. Turning his head, Chen Fei saw a huge shadow bursting out from the center of the sea, churning the water and causing waves. Upon closer inspection, the shadow turned out to be a massive purple vein shark, reaching a length of 40 to 50 meters. Its gaping mouth could almost swallow a boat hole, and its eyes shimmered with purple electrical sparks. That, that's the leader of the purple vein sharks. So much slaughter just now. Now the leader of the purple vein sharks has appeared. The situation is dangerous. Don't panic. At most, the leader of the purple vein sharks is only at the elemental embryo realm, five or six levels at most. With Guzhou here, there's no need to worry at all. Seemingly confirming the person's words, Guzhou acted at this moment. His right hand formed a palm and pressed onto the array. The array emitted a brilliant light, erupting with thunderbolts that struck the leader of the purple vein sharks. The purple vein shark's skin instantly burst open from the thunder, blood splattering as it could only dive back into the water. Seeing this, cheers erupted and many people applauded. Some even shouted, Boss Gu, if you take down this purple vein shark leader, my Hu family will bid 10 billion for its Yuan Dan. This purple vein shark has at least the strength of the elemental embryo realm fivefold. 10 billion isn't enough. I bid 15 billion. At once, the wealthy and distinguished figures began bidding with smiles on their faces. Obviously, in the eyes of the crowd, this leader of the purple vein sharks was just a pawn for the Gu family. But at this moment, Chen Fei suddenly frowned, disregarding everything else, and grabbed Mo Li and Chin Hu beside him, soaring into the sky. Boom. Just as Chin Fei soared into the air, a huge black shadow surged from beneath their boat. The tremendous force shattered dozens of boats into pieces, causing hundreds of people to fall into the water, accompanied by cries and screams. Some reacted quickly and immediately soared into the air. Others panicked, unable to get up in time, and were bitten to pieces by the purple vein sharks swimming over from the sea. Now chaos ensued. People shouted and fled. Run. Back off, quickly back off. Boss Gu, save us. The ordinary people were in panic, but the major wealthy families in the inner circle quickly stabilized after a brief panic. After all, they had many experts around them. Various experts rose into the air, protecting important figures of their families. Some people frowned as they looked at the broken boats and struggling individuals below, turning to the Gu family and questioning aloud. Boss Gu, didn't your moon auction house promise us to ensure the safety of the participants? This is a major negligence on the part of your Gu family. You must take responsibility. However, Gu Jinhai, facing the angry accusations and doubts, did not explain. Instead, he waved his hand gently, 
causing the Goo family members to stop attacking and allowing the purple vein sharks to rampage freely. Now, some people noticed something was wrong. Gujin Hai, what are you doing? Gu Zhou, why aren't you taking action to ensure safety? This is the responsibility of your Goo family. Some people, sharp eyed, had already begun flying backwards with their people. Seeing this, Gu Hai stopped pretending and directly shouted, Since you're here, why leave? Attack. With Gu Hai's command, the Gu family's cultivators turned to attack those fleeing. Gu Zhou also took action, leading the four guardians to pursue the major wealthy families. For a while, Qi flew in the air, light flickered, and blood splattered. In the sea, shadows darted, and waves surged. Countless people cried and screamed in indignation. The members of the major families, supported by experts, temporarily resisted the attacks from the Gu family, angrily questioning one by one. Gu Hai, what are you trying to do? Is your Gu family trying to offend our major families? Do you not want to live anymore? Gu Hai, you've gone mad. Gu Hai shook his head with a smile at the remarks. My Gu family alone can't compete with you all, but if you're gone now, wouldn't that be fine? After saying this, Gu Hai's voice turned cold, and he ordered decisively, kill indiscriminately, regardless of family affiliation. As a result, the attacks intensified, and the pressure on the major families increased significantly, gradually retreating. However, they remained calm, and seeing that they were no match for the Gu family, they hurriedly shouted, Join forces, let's block the Gu family together. The experts of the major families quickly united, forming a defensive formation and cooperating with each other. For a while, they actually managed to block the Gu family's attacks. Even Gu Zhou, with the four guardians, failed to subdue them. Chapter 3718 Gu Hai, your Gu family is doomed. Once the situation stabilized, someone stared at Gu Hai, gritting their teeth. As long as they could return alive, they would expose this incident. The Gu family would become the target of public criticism in this region of the sea, undoubtedly facing destruction. However, Gu Hai at this moment was not flustered at all. On the contrary, he raised the corners of his mouth, revealing a smile. Have you all gathered together? Perfect. Let's begin. With Gu Hai's command, everyone became nervous, ordering their guards to protect themselves and prevent sneak attacks from the others. But at this moment, suddenly, smoke emerged from the arms of a certain young master. Then, with a bang, the entire body of that young master was blown apart, turning into countless tiny blood pieces. Instantly, cries of panic and screams filled the air. Soon, others discovered smoke emanating from around them, and explosions occurred again. The successive explosions finally made someone realize what was happening and hurriedly shouted, Elemental Dan. It's the Elemental Dan auction just now. Quickly discard them. With this reminder, everyone finally realized that the smoke just now came from the Elemental Dan of the Purple Vein Sharks that they had bid for. Because the Elemental Dan of the Elemental Realm was quite precious, many people carried them with them to prevent accidents. But they didn't expect that the Goo family had tampered with the Elemental Dan, causing them to explode directly. As a result, this group of descendants from major families was now in a dire situation. Many people who stored the Elemental Dan on their person were instantly blown to pieces. Some were a bit luckier, storing the Elemental Dan with trusted individuals or in storage boxes, and were not directly affected. But before they could silently rejoice, Gu Zhou, with the four guardians, rushed over and harvested the remaining people. For a while, the fighting continued, and screams echoed. The onlookers on the periphery, seeing such a scene, were even more horrified, quickly fleeing in all directions. Some were secretly calculating that the Gu family's actions this time were probably targeting the major families. As insignificant figures, they believed the other party would not care about them. However, Gu Hai did not give them a chance to be optimistic. 
He looked at his son, Gu Xiaonan, and said, Don't let anyone escape. Yes. Gu Xiaonan nodded, then took out a bag of powder and sprinkled it into the seawater. Suddenly, the purple vein sharks in the sea went crazy, chasing after the fleeing crowd in all directions. The peripheral crowd, already weak in strength, was no match for the purple vein sharks in the sea at this moment. Boats were overturned one after another, and people fell into the sea, quickly bitten by the purple vein sharks, causing a burst of blood. This area of the sea had turned into a bloody hell at this moment. Only a small number of people were able to resist, including the young master Han Xian. With his noble status, he naturally had experts protecting him. Although he hadn't been able to bid for the Elemental Dan due to insufficient funds earlier, he was fortunate now not to have been targeted and had actually preserved his strength. At this moment, he was vigorously launching attacks to break free. However, Gu Hai's gaze quickly locked onto him and ordered, don't let Han Stin escape, kill him. One of the four guardians, upon hearing the order, rushed over to attack Han Xian. The guards around Han Xian immediately took action and engaged in battle. Both of them were elemental realm quadruple cultivators, evenly matched, engaging in hundreds of moves in a short time with neither gaining the upper hand. Others continued to protect Han Xian, continuing to flee outward. Seeing this, Gu Hai's expression darkened, and he ordered again, another person, go after them, kill. In the other battlefield, another member of the four guardians joined the pursuit of Han Xian. Now, Han Xian's situation became extremely critical. He only had one elemental realm guard by his side, who was already entangled by the opponent. The remaining people, the strongest among them was only at the elemental soul realm ninth level. Although there were four or five of them, it was still difficult to stop a member of the four guardians at the elemental realm quadruple level. Sure enough, as the four guardians approached, with just one palm, they knocked down two guards at the elemental soul realm ninth level. He struck again, heading towards the remaining two guards. But just as he expected to succeed and continue hunting down Han Xian, Suddenly, a residual shadow swiftly arrived at his side, and with a slap, it blocked the palm of the four guardians. Ugh. The four guardians' gaze sank as they looked at Chen Fei, showing a hint of confusion. In his impression, this young man who made the move was not a guard of any major family, and he had no impression of him before. However, he didn't pay much attention to it. It seems like someone who fishes in troubled waters hidden among the crowd. Whoever it is, just interfered with our Gu family's affairs. They must die. The four guardians were furious and attacked Chen Fei. At this moment, young master Han Xian and the remaining people were all stunned, not knowing how a master suddenly appeared to save them. Who is that? Is it the hidden guard of the young master? Could it be someone sent by the lord of the manor? Young master, don't think too much. Quick, escape. A old man beside Han Xian reminded him. The remaining people suddenly realized this and hurriedly fled. Seeing this situation, the four guardians who were fighting with Chan Fei became angry. With a loud roar, they suddenly exerted force, intending to deal with Chen Fei. But no matter how much force they exerted, in Chen Fei's hands, it was like a mud ox entering the sea, with no response at all. Instead, this young man before them accurately landed each attack on the four guardians, causing him numerous hidden injuries. Spurt. He spat out a mouthful of blood, wanting to call for help. But before he could, Jin Fei suddenly exerted force, striking him into the water, leaving him silent. Chen Fei quickly turned around and rushed towards Han Xian's direction. Gu Hai, who was originally confident, suddenly noticed the situation here and his gaze turned cold. What's going on? Where is Han Xian? Only now did someone realize that Han Xian had actually fled far away. Third brother is missing? What's going on? One of the four guardians said. Gu Hai reacted quickly and quickly looked at Gu Zhou. Elder, Han Xian is about to escape. 
Bu Zhou frowned and left the sentence before chasing after Han Xian. Deal with this side. Just as Han Xian had just escaped a little, he breathed a sigh of relief, but then he saw Gu Zhou chasing after him at an extremely fast speed, and suddenly he was shocked. Gu Zhou is coming. We're finished. The guards around Han Xian also turned pale. Because they knew that Gu Zhou was a top-notch expert at the Elemental Realm's seventh level, higher than the four guardians just now. They were completely powerless to stop this level of expert. For a moment, a sense of despair spread in their hearts. Even the chubby Han Xian couldn't help but be filled with sorrow at this moment. It's over. I'm going to die. I won't be able to eat delicious food in the future. Chapter 3719 At that moment, a voice sounded beside Han Xian. I'll hold them off. You guys go quickly. Han Xian turned his head to see a strange young man beside him. He couldn't help but take a few more glances, but still had no impression. He didn't ask aloud. Who are you? Could it be that you were the guard my father sent to me? Chen Fei glanced at Han Xian and didn't answer. Instead, he looked at Xian Yuanji Anxian and the master of the Qingmu Palace behind him, reminding them, Master, Palace Master, follow Chen Hua and leave quickly. Xiao Chen, you. Xian Yuanji Anxian and the master of the Qingmu Palace looked at Chen Fei with extremely surprised expressions. At this moment, Chen Hua and Emoli rushed over, grabbed the two of them, and ran wildly. Now, Han Xian finally understood. The strange young man in front of him wasn't targeting him, but the two guards beside him. What exactly is their background? Han Xian wondered, but he glanced up and saw Gu Zhou leading the Gu family's people, aggressively rushing over. Now, Han Xian couldn't care less about his doubts. He turned and ran towards Chen Hua's direction. Take me with you. Seeing Han Xian fleeing, Gu Zhou ordered, Chase. A guardian from the four guardians rushed out from the side and chased after Han Xian. But before the opponent could act, Chen Fei slapped him. Smack. With a loud bang, the guardian had no resistance at all and was directly hit, falling into the sea. Such a situation surprised everyone from the Gu family. Gu Zhou lightly frowned, his gaze turned towards Chen Fei, with a hint of scrutiny. Gu Zhenhai's face was gloomy as he stared fiercely at Chen Fei and said coldly, Who are you? Why are you against my Gu family? Chen Fei didn't answer, but remained cold and vigilant against the pursuers from the Gu family. As long as someone tried to get around him, he would not hesitate to strike them down. For a moment, Chen Fei alone blocked the pursuit of hundreds of people from the Gu family. Like a majestic city wall, he prevented anyone from entering. You. Seeing his subordinates being knocked down one after another and Han Xian getting further away, Gu Zhenhai couldn't help but feel a bit anxious. Just then, Gu Xiaoan suddenly noticed something and stared at Chen Fei, saying, It's you. It's actually you. Do you know him? Gu Zhenhai looked at his son. Gu Xiaoan gritted his teeth and said, Dad, the outsider who took the mermaid at Peng Lai Pavilion last night. It's this kid. What? Gu Zhenhai frowned, his gaze growing even darker. At this moment, the elder Gu Zhou grew impatient and said coldly, I don't care who you are. Anyone who harms my Gu family has only one way to go, and that's death. As he spoke, Gu Zhou took action. A majestic aura surged from him, causing a tumultuous wave on the sea's surface. It transformed into water sorts, densely shooting towards Chen Fei. These water sorts, under the enhancement of Gu Zhou's cultivation at the seventh stage of the Yuan Embryo Realm, each one was comparable to a divine weapon, flying towards Chen Fei. Seeing this, Chen Fei didn't dodge or even defend. Instead, he launched an attack towards Gu Zhou. Ugh. This way of fighting surprised Gu Zhou as well. Trying to exchange injuries. Dream on. As he spoke, Gu Zhou retreated a distance, trying to avoid Chen Fei's attack. However, Chen Fei's speed exceeded his expectations. 
In the blink of an eye, he rushed to Gu Zhou's front, with his aura surging. And those water swords of his, after hitting Chen Fei, immediately shattered into splashes, completely failing to harm Chen Fei in the slightest. How is this possible? Now, Gu Zhou was also a bit shocked. Without waiting for him to think more, Chen Fei's attack came crashing down on him. An irresistible force sent Gu Zhou flying for kilometers, spewing blood in the air. This time, everyone from the Gu family was shocked. After all, Gu Zhou was the pillar of their family's strength and the executor of this operation. As a result, the most powerful Gu Zhou was actually repelled by an outsider young man, which was truly shocking for the Gu family. For a moment, everyone's actions came to a halt. Glancing at the injured Gu Zhou, Qin Fei didn't pursue to kill him, but turned and chased after Qin Hua and the others. Seeing Qin Fei leave, the Gu family members who came back to their senses looked towards Gu Zhenhai and asked, Boss, do we continue to pursue? Gu Zhenhai couldn't decide for a moment and looked at Gu Zhou. However, before he could speak, Gu Zhou glanced at him and said coldly, Forget about that guy for now. Let's deal with the others first. Now, Gu Zhenhai understood. Elder Gu Zhou didn't have confidence and could only stop here. On the other hand, as for Qin Fei, he quickly caught up with Qin Hua and the others. At this moment, Qin Hua's group hadn't gone too far. It wasn't that they didn't want to, but they also encountered trouble and were blocked by a group of purple vein sharks. These purple vein sharks seemed to have gone mad, launching attacks regardless of pain or life. Among them, there was even the leader of the purple vein sharks, who was wounded by Gu Zhou and was at the fifth or sixth stage of the Yuan embryo realm. Fortunately, with Chin Wu's presence, he blocked the leader of the purple vein sharks. Otherwise, these people would probably perish here. Seeing Chin Fei arriving, Chin Hu shouted, Boss, come and help. This big fish is a bit troublesome. Chin Fei flew over and pointed his finger like a sword, and a burst of energy shot out. Splash. The energy hit the leader of the purple vein sharks in the sea, piercing through its head and instantly killing it. With the leader result, Chin Hu dealt with the remaining purple vein sharks much more easily, striking one after another, swiftly resolving the situation. With Chin Fei's return, the crisis at the scene was quickly alleviated. Chin Hu approached and smiled, Boss, you're back. How's the situation? The pursuers are blocked and won't be coming for now. Chin Fei replied lightly and then said to Chin Hua, It seems like you've been slacking off lately. With the cultivation at the seventh stage of the Yuan embryo realm, you couldn't even deal with this big fish. Chen Hua hurriedly explained, Boss, you're misunderstanding me. Although my realm is higher than that big fish, it's its home field in the sea, and my fire attribute is hard to exert here. Moreover, that big fish has been drugged and is fighting recklessly. I also need to protect other people, so I couldn't deal with it. Chen Fei didn't say anything about it. Although Chen Hua's words were an explanation, they were also the truth. These few simple sentences between the two, when heard by the others nearby, were full of surprise and shock, staring at Chin Fei with admiration. Repelled Gu Zhou's pursuit. Even his subordinates have cultivation at the seventh stage of the Yuan embryo realm. Killed the leader of the purple vein sharks with just one move. Who is he? What realm has his strength reached? At this moment, not to mention Han Xian and the others, even Emo Li, who spent the night with Chen Fei, was full of surprise. Chapter 3720 Chen Fei didn't pay attention to these curious and surprised gazes, but came to the side of Xian Yuanji Anxian and Qing Mu Palace Master. Master, Palace Master, I finally found you. The two of them were also excited, holding Chen Fei's hand, their voices trembling. Good lad, how did you end up here? Over these years, how have you been after coming out? It seems like you've become much stronger. 
Master, Palace Master, how did you end up here? What's going on exactly? For a moment, both sides had endless words to say. Chinhua, however, couldn't stand it anymore and said, Boss, we're still adrift at sea. How about finding a place to rest and chat? Chin Fei paused for a moment and looked around. He was scratching his head. After all, because of the previous battle, their ship had long been destroyed. And running away all the way, they didn't know where they had ended up now, surrounded only by a vast sea. Suddenly, Chin Fei felt a little embarrassed and looked at Han Xian and the others, asking, Do you know where this is? At this moment, there were only three people beside Han Xian. Han Xian looked at an old man and asked, Uncle Sun, what do you think? Uncle Sun flew up into the air at the question, then observed the surroundings and finally descended, saying to everyone, I can roughly determine the location. Currently, the nearest island to us is Hulong Island to the southwest. With all our effort, it's probably a two-day journey. Hearing this, Chin Fei was about to speak. But Uncle Sun's tone changed, and he said, But Hulong Island is probably not a good place to go. Because it's the territory of the Gu family. And the gathering place of purple vein sharks is also near Hulong Island. Ah, oh, what should we do then? Prince Han Xian, the little chubby guy, panicked at the words. The others also wore troubled expressions, temporarily without any good ideas. At this moment, Emo Lee suddenly spoke up. Um, um, well, if you don't mind, I have a suggestion. Immediately, everyone's gaze turned to Emo Lee, making the little girl nervous. Seeing this, Chin Fei held Emo Lee's hand and gave her an encouraging look. Go ahead. Emo Lee took a deep breath and said, Our mermaid clan is not far from the sea area. If you want to take a rest, you can come to us. At the mention of this, Chin Fei's eyes lit up. After all, the reason he redeemed Emo Lee was to go to her mermaid clan and find their sanctuary. That's perfect. Let's go there. And Prince Han Xian and his group showed curious expressions. Seeing this, Chin Fei quickly explained and revealed Emo Lee's identity. After hearing it, the chubby Prince Han Xian patted his chest and said, In that case, we'll go there. Upon hearing this, Uncle Sun became somewhat nervous and signaled to Prince Han Xian with his eyes. Seeing this, Xin Yuan Jianxian and Qingmu Palace Master spoke up, Uncle Sun, Chen Fei is our acquaintance. We trust him and believe there won't be any problems. Well, Uncle Sun still seemed hesitant. It was the chubby Prince Han Xian who looked cheerful, Uncle Sun, since both elders have spoken, then there shouldn't be any problem. Besides, I've never seen the mermaid clan before. Emoli, do you have any delicious food there? I can pay for it. The chubby prince looked greedy. Finally, Uncle Sun relented, nodding, then we'll trouble Miss Emo. With the destination decided, Emoli identified the direction and led the group into action. The group swiftly progressed through the sea, occasionally surfacing to breathe. In this way, after about half a day's journey, a dense coral reef appeared ahead. Emoli exclaimed, We're here. After speaking, Emoli moved her mouth, emitting several sound waves that the others couldn't hear. A moment later, two green-scaled merfolk, each holding a bone trident, swam over. Emoli hurried forward and exchanged some words with them. After some effort, the two were finally persuaded and nodded. Then, they led the way and Emoli led the others to continue forward, circling through the coral thicket until they finally arrived at a giant rock. Each of them injected a stream of chi into a specific position on the giant rock, and the chi immediately circulated and transformed, forming a huge and intricate array. The array shimmered, and the giant rock trembled, splitting open from the center to reveal a circular entrance about two meters in size. Emoli took the lead and led everyone into the cave entrance. After traveling through the pitch black cave for about the time it takes for an incense stick to burn, everyone suddenly saw a bright light, and a concave valley appeared, like a basin in the mountains on land. However, unlike on land, 
There was a huge bubble covering the valley from above, enclosing the entire valley. Through the transparent bubble, one could see many tall and short houses in the valley, interspersed with different terrains like fields, slopes, and pools. However, unlike the materials and ground on land, they were all made up of shells, corals, seaweed, and the like from the sea. Among them, many merfolk were shuttling about, busy with their tasks. At a glance, the world inside the bubble was like a special miniature city. Such as seeing Stun Shen Fei and the others, their faces full of surprise and awe. Emoli led everyone through the bubble and into it. Then she turned her head and said, In the bubble city, you can breathe freely. Upon hearing this, everyone released their held breaths and took a deep breath, their faces filled with joy. There's really air here. Great, it's so comfortable like this. Our clan can breathe underwater and also live on land. Originally, there was no bubble city here. Later, as more practitioners among our clan went to the surface more often, they searched for a surface city and built this city, allowing some of our clan who liked it to move in. Emoli explained. As she spoke, several people approached. These people were different from the guards at the entrance just now. They didn't have scales on their bodies, walked on two legs, and were almost the same as humans. Sister Emoli, you're back safely. That's great. A young girl who looked about 10 years old threw herself into Emo Lee's arms with a sobbing tone. Chow Tio, I'm fine. Emo Lee comforted the little girl. It won't look good if you keep crying. Sister Emo Lee, are these the human guests you mentioned? A handsome young man with a strong build looked at Chen Fei and the others and asked. Emo Lee nodded and took the initiative to introduce Brother Yuan Shi, this is Master Chen Fei, this is Master Chen Hua and this. Before she could finish the introductions, Brother Yuanchi interrupted coldly, no need to rush to introduce, whether they're esteemed guests or not, we'll see after the inspection. Let's go, follow me for inspection. Yuanchi turned and left. Chapter 3721 Imoli cast an apologetic glance at everyone and explained, outsiders cannot enter the bubble city at will, so we need to... Chin Fei smiled faintly, it's all right. Undergoing inspection is what we should do. Chubby Prince Han Xian also nodded, I understand the rules. By the way, is there a place here to buy gifts? I came empty-handed and didn't bring anything. Emoli replied, your highness, don't worry about it. Soon, the group arrived at a white building constructed of shells and corals. Yuachi, accompanied by a stooped old man holding a mirror, conducted a check on everyone. After confirming that everything was fine, Emoli asked Yuanchi, Brother Yuanchi, how about Master? Before Emoli could finish her question, Yuanchi interrupted her, Master is busy, you can wait here. The group waited in the hall. Junior sister Chao Chiao brought tea and served Chen Fei and the others, then curiously asked about the outside world. Emoli briefly talked about the outside situation and introduced the mermaid clan situation to Chen Fei and the others. Currently, the most powerful force among the mermaid clan was the sect Emoli belonged to, the Cold Water Palace. The Cold Water Palace's master, Drowling, was the strongest among the entire mermaid clan, also the clan leader, and Emoli's master. Due to Drowling's identity and strength, Disciples of the Cold Water Palace naturally held high positions among the Mermaid Clan, and many of them held important positions in the Bubble City, with considerable strength. After chatting for a while, Jialin had not yet arrived. So, Chen Fei asked their master and Qingmu Palace master about their situation. The two recounted their experiences to Chen Fei in detail. Originally, after the passage was opened, the two of them, after resigning from their duties on Earth, made an appointment to go outside together to broaden their horizons. So, through the spatial passage, they successively went to the Great Flame Realm and the Great Summer Realm, traveling for nearly 20 years, gaining a lot and improving their strength. Next, they arrived at the Earth Element Realm. 
Having wandered for more than 20 years, they naturally knew that the Earth element realm was stronger than other small worlds, with many experts. So they deliberately waited until their strength increased before coming to the Earth element realm, and they acted quite low-keyly, traveling through various large mansions in the Earth element realm. Although they had been low-key and cautious in their actions along the way and hadn't caused any major trouble, a year ago, an unexpected incident occurred on a sea island in Daxing Mansion. During a transaction, they got into a conflict with someone and a fight broke out. Originally, the other party was just a small trader with not much strength, so after a brief conflict, at most, they would have just compensated for some money and settled it. But unexpectedly, someone reported them to the authorities. When they were brought back for investigation, it was found out that Xin Yuanjiangshan was actually a member of the Hua clan. Now, the nature of the matter changed. After all, 80,000 years ago, under the leadership of Tianming, the Daiming Mansion rose up in rebellion and later failed. Under the leadership of Wu Qi, Tianming was dismembered, Daiming Mansion was divided, and the Hua clan was slaughtered and suppressed, even subjected to prohibitions, leading to the fact that even today, the Hua clan cannot break through and cultivate to the Yuan embryo stage. Having experienced these events, the Hua clan had become a source of disaster and an ominous sign in many large mansions, and they were regarded as a lower class existence. Therefore, when Xin Yuan Jiangxian's identity as a member of the Hua clan was revealed, many people at the scene clamored for his execution. Qingmu Palace Master desperately pleaded, even offering all their money, wanting to buy a life. But the other party was relentless, and with the crowd incited, the authorities ultimately sentenced Xin Yuan Jiangxian to be executed and Qingmu Palace Master to have his cultivation abolished. At this desperate moment, chubby Prince Hanskin happened to pass by, learned about the matter, and eventually intervened. Using his title as a prince, he saved the two and took them under his wing. Grateful for this life-saving grace, the two were naturally very grateful and followed Han Xian to assist him. After spending some time together, the two found that chubby Prince Han Xian had a good temper, so their relationship gradually became harmonious. In addition, relying on their culinary skills from Earth, they created many fresh things, which captured the chubby prince's appetite. So, over the course of half a year, their relationship with the chubby prince became better and better. During this time, they also planned to recover from their injuries, do more things for Hansian to repay his life-saving grace, and then bid farewell and leave. But unexpectedly, before their injuries were healed, Chen Fei came looking for them, leading to the events of today. After listening to the entire experience, Chen Fei breathed a sigh of relief, got up, and bowed to Hansian, expressing his gratitude. Many thanks to your highness for saving our lives. Hansian, however, remained indifferent and smiled. No need to be polite. I quite like the two old gentlemen as well. They've made me quite a few delicious treats. After some pleasantries, Chen Fei originally planned to heal his master and Qingmu Palace master, but considering the inappropriate occasion, he temporarily refrained. However, after waiting for a while, even refreshing the tea twice, Emma Li's master, Drowling, had yet to appear. Now, Chen Hua, who had a fiery temper, became somewhat impatient and muttered, Why hasn't he come yet? Is he putting on airs? Sun Shuriya, by Han Xian's side, also frowned, The master of the cold water palace seems quite mysterious. Emoli, upon hearing this, looked somewhat embarrassed and wanted to say something but didn't know how to explain. Seeing this, Chen Fei squeezed her hand and comforted her. It's all right. You don't have to worry. We came here for help, so waiting is only natural. Han Stin also said to Sun Shuria, Master, don't be anxious. This place is nice. Let's just treat it as a tour. After waiting for about the time it takes to drink a cup of tea, finally, the group arrived at the Grand Hall. Leading the way was Yuan Qi, followed by a man in a dark robe with two beards and a stern face, stepping forward. The palace master has arrived. Yuan Qi announced loudly, then looked at everyone. Everyone stood up, 
slightly bowing in respect, greetings to the palace master. Seeing this, Yuan Chi raised an eyebrow, about to get angry. Is this how you show respect? Imoli, seeing this, hurriedly explained, Brother Yuan Chi, these few have special identities. What's so special about them? Yuan Chi remained arrogant, kneel down and show respect. Now, even Shen Fei couldn't help but frown, his expression turning ugly. Sun Shuria coldly snorted, speaking up, Who do you think you are, daring to make my master kneel down? Master? Your master, in our cold water palace, is not worth mentioning. Yuan Chi remained arrogant. Sun Shuria took out a token and said, My master is the prince of Daxing Mansion, the imperial relative of the mansion lord, Han Jing Chuan. Your cold water palace is in our Daxing Mansion. When it comes to kneeling, it should be you. Seeing the token, Jialin, who had been silent behind them, now glared at Yuan Chi and rebuked, The prince has arrived. Why didn't you report it? Master, I... Yuan Chi now looked embarrassed, not knowing how to explain. He could only blame Emoli. Emoli, why didn't you tell me earlier? Emoli shrugged and said, Brother, I wanted to introduce them to you earlier. But you interrupted and said there was no need for introductions. You... Yuan Chi wanted to explain. But at this moment, Jialin took the initiative to step forward, squeezed out a smile, and said to Han Xian, The prince has graced us with his presence, forgive us for the oversight. Han Xian waved his hand, Palace Master, no need to be so polite. It's just a small misunderstanding, easily resolved. Indeed, indeed, Jialin nodded repeatedly. Under this atmosphere of harmony, the embarrassment was wiped away. Chapter 3722 After everyone sat down, Jialin finally brought up the main topic. I wonder, your highness, what brings you here this time? Upon hearing this, Han Stin quickly recounted the incident of his group coming to participate in the auction but being attacked by the Gu family. He finished by mentioning their intention to recuperate here. As Jialin listened to Han Xian's account, his facial expressions changed continuously with the narrative. Sometimes surprised, sometimes worried, sometimes nervous, as if he himself had experienced the same events alongside Han Xian. Chen Hua and Chen Fei, seeing this scene, couldn't help but communicate with each other telepathically. Boss, this palace master of the Cold Water Palace is truly a good actor. His expressions are so vivid even better than the best actors. Don't stir up trouble, just watch. I never expected the Gu family to have such ambitions and resort to such methods, even controlling the purple vein shark. They cannot hide this matter. The Gu family must pay the price. Han Xian concluded solemnly. At this moment, upon hearing the words purple vein shark, Yuan Qi's expression suddenly changed. He couldn't help but look at the palace master, drowling, seeming to have something to say. However, Jialin quickly signaled him with his eyes to hold back his words. After Han Xian finished speaking, he asked Jialin, we came here to rest and recuperate for a while. I wonder if the palace master accepts. Jialin quickly nodded, being able to accommodate your highness is an honor for our cold water palace. We welcome you. Immediately, Jialin arranged for people to prepare guest rooms and various hospitality items on the spot. After Han Xian finished speaking, Emoli approached and bowed to Jialin, saying, Master, Mr. Chen has something to discuss with you. Mr. Chen, Jialin was taken aback. Emoli quickly pointed to Chen Fei and introduced, Master, this is Mr. Chen Fei. He saved me on White Moon Island. This time, we were pursued at sea, and thanks to Mr. Chen's help, we were able to return. Ah, oh, I see. Jialin nodded, but seemed somewhat disinterested. He casually looked at Chen Fei and asked, What does Mr. Chen want to discuss? Chen Fei spoke up, Palace Master, from M.O. Li, I learned that your tribe seems to have a sacred place. I would like to visit the sacred place of the Mermaid Clan. Before Jialin could respond to the mention of the sacred place, Yuan Chi suddenly glared at Emoli with a reprimanding tone. Emoli, 
The sacred place is a secret of our mermaid clan. How could you casually mention it to outsiders? Brother, I... Emoli wanted to explain. But Yuan Chi didn't give her a chance to speak, continuing, Don't make excuses. You have violated the rules in this matter. Remember to accept the punishment. I... Emoli looked aggrieved. Chin Fei quickly spoke up to help explain, the matter of the sacred place was my request, unrelated to Emoli. And please rest assured, I have no malicious intentions. Finally, Jialin spoke up, smiling at Chin Fei, and said, Mr. Chin, regarding that sacred place, our clan has an ancestral rule that outsiders are not allowed to enter. Even among our mermaid clan, only elite talents have the opportunity to enter. Even I, as the clan leader, only have a few chances to enter the sacred place in a year. So, upon hearing the other party's refusal, Chen Fei quickly said, Palace Master, I understand the value of the sacred place. Therefore, I am willing to exchange cultivation resources for a chance to visit. Please. However, Jialin still shook his head, Mr. Chen. I'm sorry. After finishing speaking, Jialin stood up, with a smile on his face, and warmly welcomed Han Xian. Chen Fei, seeing this, could only stop talking. Emoli, with a hint of apology, said, Master Chen, I'm sorry, I... Chen Fei shook his head and said, No need to apologize, you've already done well enough. Afterward, the group checked into the guest rooms provided by the Cold Water Palace. Of course, there were distinctions in the level of accommodations. The people around Prince Hansian stayed in top-notch suites. As for Chen Fei and his group, they were each given a small room, just enough to get by. Chen Fei didn't mind. He found Xian Yuan Jia Shan in the Lord of Qingmu Palace and personally treated their injuries. Fortunately, their injuries weren't severe. Chen Fei used the power of wood to quickly heal them. During the healing process, Chen Fei also learned about their strength levels. Master Xian Yuan Jia Shan was currently at the ninth level of the Elemental Soul Realm. Due to his Huazhu background, his cultivation had been stuck at this level for several years and couldn't progress further. As for the Lord of Qingmu Palace, he was the descendant of the people from the lower realm of the Forbidden Island, so he wasn't considered a true member of the Huazhu. He hadn't been constrained by the prohibitions and curses and had reached the second level of the elemental embryo realm. After healing their injuries, Chen Fei chatted with them about their respective experiences during this time. Upon learning that Chen Fei's strength had soared and that Earth had undergone tremendous changes, they were both delighted and excited, almost eager to go back and see for themselves. After chatting until midnight, Chen Fei bid them farewell and returned to his room to rest. However, not long after he lay down, he sensed several figures quietly approaching from outside. Instantly, Chen Fei became alert, releasing his divine soul to probe the surroundings. Is that guy asleep? Anything unusual? No, he's just an ordinary cultivator, nothing special. That's good. I'll go back and report to Senior Yuan Chi. Yuan Chi. Chen Fei's heart stirred and he turned into a shadow, leaving the guest room and following them. Arriving at a room, Yuan Qi was indeed inside. After reporting, Yuan Qi took out a letter, read it carefully, then put it away, and left. So, Chen Fei continued to follow. Knock, knock. Yuan Qi knocked on the door and said, Master, it's me, Yuan Qi. Come in. Yes. Yuan Qi pushed the door open, entered the room, and then closed the door. Immediately, Chin Fei sensed a special aura enveloping the entire room, isolating some of the space inside, making it impossible to perceive anything. Jialin, Yuan Chi. Chin Fei's heart stirred, and he cautiously penetrated the isolation with his divine soul and entered the room. Inside the room, the two of them were not weak, but they were definitely not as strong as Chin Fei especially in terms of divine soul, where they were much inferior. Therefore, Chen Fei's divine soul smoothly penetrated, and the two of them didn't notice anything. Master, 
Did you hear what Prince Han Xian said? What should we do? Yuan Chi asked directly. Zhao Lin said, he's the prince, so we'll just do as we're told and handle the reception. But, master, Yuan Chi's tone became somewhat urgent. The other party mentioned that when the Gu family took action, they involved the Purple Vein Shark. And some time ago, someone accompanied the Purple Vein Shark clan to negotiate with us. If this matter is exposed, when the Gu family is investigated, our Merfo clan will probably be implicated as well. This. Jialing frowned, remaining silent for a while. Chapter 3723 At this moment, outside the room, Chen Fei couldn't help but be astonished to hear this. After all, he hadn't expected that the Merfolk clan would be involved with the Gu family's actions. Could it be that they were also in cahoots and would act on behalf of the Gu family? Just as Chen Fei was pondering, the hesitant Jialin spoke up. Even so, our Merfolk clan hasn't directly participated in the Gu family's affairs. I believe we shouldn't have too much trouble. Upon hearing this, Yuan Chi became somewhat anxious. Master, how can we be so optimistic about this kind of matter? We indeed haven't directly intervened, but we have had contact with the Gu family and the Purple Vein Shark. If this matter is exposed, our Merfo clan will definitely be implicated. Jialing said, that's true. But when the other party contacted us initially, we didn't agree. If we explain the situation clearly, I believe Lord Han's family should understand. Yuanchi said, Master, you're being too naive. His voice was somewhat agitated. This matter with the Gu family, to put it simply, involves murder. To put it heavily, it's an attempt at rebellion. For such a matter, Lord Han's family will definitely take it very seriously. By then, do you think our explanation will be accepted? Ah, oh, well, um... Jialin became troubled again for a moment. After hesitating for a while, he said to Yuan Chi, Then what do you think we should do? Yuan Chi's tone became stern, Master, for us at the moment, there is only one path to take. What path? Jialin asked. That is to follow the Gu family. Follow the Gu family? Jialin paused, then said, What do you mean? Yuan Chi nodded, Master, you heard what Han Xian and the others said just now. They were chased here by the Gu family, which shows that although the Gu family's actions weren't completely successful, they were successful to a large extent. Moreover, they fled all the way here, and the news definitely hasn't spread. So, we need to take advantage of this time to deal with them quickly and then contact the Gu family. In this way, not only will we avoid the crisis of exposure, but we will also help the Gu family a great deal. After the matter is settled, the Gu family will definitely not forget our favor. Upon hearing this, Jialing was startled, killing the prince. If this were to be exposed, our Mirfo clan would be doomed. Yuan Chi persuaded, Master, we're already standing on the edge of a cliff. Even if we don't act now, when Han Xian returns and exposes the matter, we're basically doomed. But, but, Jialing hesitated. Yuan Chi continued persuading, Master, we don't have time. We must make a decision quickly, otherwise, when both the Han family and the Gu family arrive, we won't have any choice left. Well, um, I'll think about it again, think about it again, Jialing said. Master, I. Yuan Chi wanted to continue persuading, but Jialing waved his hand and said, No need to say more, let me think about it again. You go back and rest first. Don't tell anyone about today's events. Upon hearing this, Yuanchi could only bid farewell with a cupped hand and then left. Outside, Chen Fei had heard their entire conversation and roughly understood the whole situation. At this moment, after seeing Yuanchi leave and not return to his own room, but instead head in another direction, Chen Fei hurriedly followed. Not long after, behind a coral, Yuanchi waved his hand and summoned a small black fish. After gently tapping it, the fish opened its mouth and Yuanchi inserted a small node into its mouth, then injected a trace of elemental energy into the fish's body. The fish then turned around and darted into the coral, disappearing. Watching the fish leave, 
Yuan Chi then turned and went back. Chen Fei saw this scene and couldn't help but furrow his brow slightly. What is Yuan Chi doing? It seems like he's conveying some information to someone. Without an answer, Chen Fei returned to his room. The next morning, Chen Fei got up, freshened up, and went to have breakfast. On the way, Chen Fei pondered how to tell Han Xian about yesterday's events. As a result, as soon as he entered the restaurant, he unexpectedly saw the Lord of Jiaoling Palace waiting for them inside. The palace lord is here too. Chen Fei was somewhat surprised. And when the Lord of Jiaoling saw them coming, he rubbed his hands, took a deep breath as if making a determined decision, and walked over to them. Palace Lord, you. Han Xian greeted with a smile. Jialin said to Han Xian, Young master, there's something I'd like to discuss with you. Palace Lord, whatever it is, feel free to speak. Han Xian said. Um, well? Jialin glanced at Chen Fei and them, obviously indicating that he didn't want them present. However, Han Xian waved his chubby hand and smiled. Mr. Chen saved my life, so the palace lord can rest assured. All right. Jialin nodded, pulled Han Xian to sit down, and began, Young master, here's the thing, recently. As Chen Fei listened to Jialin, he couldn't help but show surprise. Because Jialin actually directly told Han Xian about the matter he discussed with Yuan Chi last night. He voluntarily confessed about the negotiation with the Purple Vein Shark Clan and the Gu family's attempt to recruit their Merfolk Clan. He also emphasized that they hadn't agreed and therefore didn't participate in the Gu family siege. Of course, Jialin also admitted the mistake of not reporting the news. He was willing to accept punishment for it. He specifically found Han Xian today to explain everything and seek forgiveness, hoping for leniency. After listening, Han Xin couldn't help but show surprise as well. His attendant beside him had a rather serious expression and even secretly stimulated his elemental energy, guarding against Jialin's actions. Chen Fei, having learned about this matter last night, wasn't particularly surprised. From the current situation, it seemed that Jialin, who had contemplated all night, ultimately didn't follow Yuan Qi's advice. He didn't lean towards the Gu family, but instead confessed everything to the Han family, seeking forgiveness. After discussing with his attendant, Han Xian finally spoke, Palace Lord Jialin, I'm glad you voluntarily confessed this matter. I will plead for leniency from the Lord of the Manor regarding this matter. Hearing this promise, Jialin breathed a sigh of relief. In his heart, he thought this gamble was successful. Seeing this, the attendant spoke up, Palace Lord Jialin, our top priority now is to quickly send a message to the Lord of the Manor to stop the Gu family's actions. Jialin nodded repeatedly, what Master Sun said is right. I'll immediately send someone to deliver the message. Everyone hadn't even had breakfast yet and quickly got busy. Back in the room, Han Stin sighed, it's fortunate that Palace Lord Jialin voluntarily confessed this matter. Otherwise, we might have encountered danger. Now, we just have to wait for the message to spread. When the Lord of the Manor sends someone over, the Gu family is definitely finished. After saying this, many people in the room nodded in agreement. But at this moment, Chen Fei suddenly spoke in a solemn voice. Don't rejoice too soon, the crisis may not be over yet. Chapter 3724 Chen Fei's words caused everyone present to fall silent, and all eyes turned towards him. The Lord of Drowling Palace furrowed his brow, a hint of curiosity in his eyes as he assessed Chen Fei. The palace guards beside him glared angrily, staring at Chen Fei, and said displeasedly, irrelevant people should not speak casually. However, before the guard finished, Hanskin proactively looked over and asked, Mr. Chen, what did you mean just now? Seeing this, the Lord of Jialin scowled at the guard, waved his hand for him to step back, then turned to Chen Fei. Chen Fei looked at Jialin and asked, Lord Jialin, do you know where your disciple Yuan Chi is right now? Huh? 
He should be practicing in the training room. He always trains diligently, Jialin replied. It's best for you to send someone to check, Shen Fei reminded. This. Jialin was puzzled, but still called someone over and gave instructions. Han Stin noticed something and hurriedly asked, Mr. Chen, is there something wrong with you, Anchi? Chen Fei said, I'm not sure if there's a problem, but last night, I accidentally saw Yu Anchi leaving and delivering a letter. What? That's impossible. Before Han Stin could speak, the Lord of Jiaolin refuted first. After all, in his view, although Yu Anchi had advised him to take action against Han Xian last night, it was just a suggestion. As the palace lord, he hadn't made a decision, so it was impossible for his disciple to act without his consent. Moreover, Yuan Chi was considered talented throughout the entire Coldwater Palace, being the top disciple and even regarded as his successor by Jialin himself. Therefore, Jialin's first reaction upon hearing Chen Fei's suggestion that his disciple might be betraying him was naturally disbelief. Chen Fei looked at the excited Jialin without saying a word, just quietly waiting. After a moment, the disciple sent out by Jialin returned. Jialin hurriedly asked, How is it? Is Yuanchi in the training room? The disciple said, Palace Lord, senior brother is not in the training room. What? Jialin was surprised and continued, Then is he elsewhere? Have you checked other places? The disciple replied, Palace Lord, I went to all the places senior brother Yuanchi often goes to, but he wasn't there. Everyone said they haven't seen senior brother Yuanchi since last night. This. Jialin's expression changed drastically, but he still didn't want to believe that his senior disciple would betray him. So he ordered, send word to the entire Coldwater Palace, no, to the entire Bubble City, and have Yuanchi come see me immediately. Yes. The disciple left to carry out the order. Although it was not yet certain whether Yuanchi had betrayed them, at this moment, Han Xian and the others had already believed Chen Fei's words to a great extent and couldn't help but ask, Mr. Chen, if someone is leaking information, what should we do? At this mention, Jialin couldn't help but feel nervous. If the Gu family comes to hunt us down, my cold water palace will probably be unable to resist. For a moment, everyone present was tense. Only Chen Fei and Chen Hu remained indifferent. Chen Hu said carelessly, with my big brother here, there's no need to worry about anything. If those Gu family dare to come over, our big brother will make sure they never leave. Uh, this. Chen Hu's words surprised both Han Xian's group and Jialin's group, making them look at Chen Fei in astonishment. Chen Fei understood their suspicion but didn't explain further, just waved his hand and said, it's all right. Everyone, just rest well. After speaking, Chen Fei got up and left, with Chen Hua quickly following suit. Xian Yuan Jia Shan and the Lord of Qingmu Palace also wanted to follow, but Han Xian stopped them. Gentlemen, what do you think of Mr. Chen's words just now? Xian Yuan Jia Shan and the Lord of Qingmu Palace glanced at each other, then spoke, Although we haven't seen Chen Fei for decades, we know he's not someone who speaks falsehoods. Since he confirmed it himself, there must be a way to resolve it. But, those are the pursuers from the Gu family, with top-level experts like Gu Zhou at the Elemental Embryo Realm 7th stage. And almost the entire Purple Vein Shark Clan is assisting. How could he, alone, possibly resist? Is he controlling high-level experts? The Lord of Jialin Palace obviously couldn't believe it. Xian Yuan Jia Shan and the Lord of Qingmu Palace couldn't explain either. So they could only firmly say, we trust Chen Fei. You. The Lord of Jialin Palace felt somewhat absurd and even regretted whether he should have listened to Yuan Chi's advice. But now that he had chosen to confess, there was no turning back. So, Jialin could only look at Han Xian and said, young master, can you contact Master Han? As long as he sends someone over, the threat from the Gu family will naturally be resolved. At this, Han Stian was also somewhat embarrassed. I've already sent a message, but it will take at least two or three days for Master to receive it and send someone over. I'm afraid. What should we do? Jialin was so anxious that he almost couldn't help but want to turn and flee. 
Seeing this, Hanskin comforted him, palace master, you don't need to be too anxious. Perhaps Yuan Shi hasn't actually left, or perhaps what Mr. Chen said is true. But, but, Jialin was really anxious. Han Stin was the young master, with experts protecting him. If he couldn't fight, he would probably still be able to escape. But he and his cold water palace, in this bubble city, had nowhere to escape to. Moreover, he also understood his own strength. As the leader of the Merfolk clan, he only had the strength of the Elemental Embryo Realm 4th stage, which could only be considered average in this sea area. Compared to the leader of the Purple Vein Shark clan at the Elemental Embryo Realm 6th stage, he was still a level lower. If the Gu family really attacked with all their might, his Merfolk clan would be in danger of destruction. Just as Jialin was feeling anxious, his subordinate brought even worse news. Early this morning, the guards at the gate of Bubble City saw Yuan Qi leaving alone. This time, Chen Fei's words were almost confirmed. Yuan Qi had indeed betrayed them. The Gu family's offensive would probably come soon. For a moment, everyone present turned pale, their expressions tense. Seeing this, Han Xian comforted Jialin a few more words, then left separately. On the way back to his room, Han Skin's attendant couldn't help but say, Young master, should we leave? Han Skin frowned and said, Attendant son, do you also not believe Mr. Chen's words? Young master, it's not that I don't believe it. It's just that Mr. Chen's words are too incredible. How could he, alone, resist the Gu family's attack? It's impossible, attendant son hurriedly explained. But both elders said they believe Mr. Chen, Han Xian said. Attendant son was anxious. Young master, they have a close relationship with Chen Fei, so naturally, they believe. Besides, young master, your identity is different. You can't take risks. We should leave as soon as possible. Han Stin looked conflicted, hesitating, but ultimately shook his head and said, Chen Fei is my savior. I can't abandon him. Even if we have to leave, we should leave together. Now, attendant son became anxious. Young master, leaving together will attract too much attention, and we won't be able to leave at all. No need to say more. My mind is made up. Han Stin waved his hand. Chapter 3725 Attendant son wanted to persuade, but seeing that Han Xian wasn't receptive, he could only turn to Xin Yuan Jia Shan in the Lord of Qingmu Palace and asked, You're acquainted with Mr. Chen. Can you persuade young master? As soon as this was said, Xin Yuan Jia Shan, with a quick temper, immediately furrowed his brows, Old son, are you implying you don't trust my disciple? Upon hearing this, attendant son's expression also darkened, muttering somewhat dissatisfied, a low-level world warrior, how can he be trusted? Obviously, although attendant son didn't say much because of Han Xian, that inherent pride of the residents of the elemental realm was hard to abandon, especially in such a crisis. Hearing this, Xian Yuan Jia Shan stood up abruptly, glaring fiercely at attendant son, and sternly said, what do you mean by that? Seeing this, attendant son also became angry, his expression darkening, and he said coldly, what do you want to do? Seeing that the two were about to start fighting, the Lord of Qingmu Palace hurriedly stepped forward. He pulled Xian Yuan Jia Shan aside, signaling him to be quiet. Then he looked at attendant son, showing a smile, and explained, Attendant son, don't be angry, Xian Yuan isn't malicious. Humph. Attendant son snorted, obviously still somewhat displeased. The Lord of Qingmu Palace continued to explain, Attendant son, I know you're worried about young master's safety. To be honest, young master is our savior, and we don't want him to be in danger. If there are really special circumstances, even if we have to fight to the death, we will protect young master. After hearing these words, attendant son's anger subsided a lot. He nodded, got up, and said, I'll report to young master, and you should also make some preparations. It's best to discuss with Mr. Chin and understand each other's strengths, so we can defend together. After speaking, attendant son left, 
his gaze sweeping past Xin Yuan Jia Shan without stopping, directly passing by. Obviously, he was still somewhat angry about it. Xin Yuan Jia Shan also had a fiery temper. Seeing this, he snorted lightly, don't suppress us with young master. In terms of status, little Chin is no worse than young master. Yesterday, they had a good conversation with Chin Fei, so naturally, they knew Chin Fei's current status. It's just that Chin Fei reminded them not to disclose it casually yesterday, so the two of them hadn't mentioned it. Now, Xin Yuan Jia Shan couldn't help but mutter. Attendant Sun was a high-level expert in the elemental realm, and naturally heard this. He instinctively wanted to refute, but ultimately restrained himself and hurriedly left. Seeing this, the Lord of Qingwu Palace couldn't help but glare at Xin Yuan Jia Shan. Can't you just endure it and not compete with them? Xin Yuan Jia Shan said, Old Sun may look down on me, but he can't look down on my disciple. I can't stand it. You. The Lord of Qingmu Palace looked helpless and could only pull Xin Yuan Jia Shan aside. You're getting old. Stop showing off. Go see Little Chin. After returning to his room, attendant son, thinking about what had just happened, still felt uneasy. He then went out again, found the Lord of Jialing Palace, and had a detailed discussion with him, arranging the defense of Bubble City. After this conversation, attendant son felt slightly relieved. And so, amidst tension and anxiety, evening arrived. Suddenly, a merfolk guard rushed in, shouting loudly, Master, something's wrong. What's going on? Speak quickly. Jialin stood up with a slap. The guard hurriedly said, The Purple Vein Shark Clan is attacking, right outside. What? Jialin's face changed drastically, and his body couldn't help but tremble. Attendant Sun's face also immediately darkened, thinking to himself, the Gu family is attacking. Boom, boom, boom. Just then, a series of explosions sounded, shaking the entire bubble city. Then, a deep voice sounded, Jialin, hand over the people. Upon hearing this familiar voice, Jialin's expression changed. This is the clan leader of the Purple Vein Shark clan, Hunt Shark. What should we do? Jialin looked to Han Xian for help. Han Xian was momentarily at a loss and looked to Attendant Sun beside him. Attendant Sun gritted his teeth and said to Jialin, Master, don't panic. Stick to the plan. Let's not go out and defend our position. However, before he could finish speaking, another series of explosions followed, shaking Bubble City even more violently. At the same time, Hunt Shark's voice rang out again, Jialin, why don't you come out and see me? Jialin remained silent. It seemed calm outside, without any sound. Just when everyone was guessing whether the other side had retreated. Suddenly, a much more intense series of explosions resounded, booming. The strong shockwave shook the entire bubble city, and many buildings collapsed directly. Outside, a series of screams could be heard. Obviously, some of the merfolk had been injured. Master, the enemy is about to break through our defense, the guard reported nervously. Jialin was both anxious and angry, but he was helpless and could only look to Attendant Sun. At this moment, Attendant Sun, too, looked tense and said through gritted teeth, Master Jialin, we can't go out. The enemy is coming at full force. If we go out to meet them, we'll surely die. We can only defend and maybe there's still a way out. But, Jialin felt somewhat helpless, but ultimately sighed and nodded. But at this moment, there were more screams outside. Hunt Shark's laughter rang out, Jialin, are you ignoring your own people? People of the Merfolk, you've all seen it. Is this the kind of clan leader you want? The voice spread throughout Bubble City, stirring up unrest. The situation became more and more critical, but everyone was at a loss. Just then, Chen Fei stepped forward and said, Let me go. You. Everyone was stunned, looking at Chen Fei, intending to dissuade him. But then, 
Attendant Sun thought of something and gritted his teeth. Mr. Chen said he would take action before. Since that's the case, let him go. Han Skin also wanted to say something. But Chen Fei had already stepped out. Seeing this, Chen Hua and Emo Li quickly followed. Xian Yuan Jia Shan and the Lord of Qingmu Palace saw this and hurried to catch up. Han Skin paused for a moment, then stepped forward. Seeing this, Attendant Sun hurriedly stopped Han Xian, young master, you mustn't take risks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Your support means a lot. And, if you want to read other novels, you can also try and check these videos.